it turns out that my big thing is fish that are bigger than me. I think most people would have a pretty visceral reaction to that. <laughs> Only fish. if I'm in the water with them. If nope, I'm like just, outside of the water. Nope. If I just see a fish that's bigger than me and it's alive, turns out it bothers me a lot. How often have you ever seen a fish in real life bigger than you? Certainly not in the uh, fucking like Coming Creek. <laughs> no, no. But like, <laughs> when I when we were at the Bass Pro Shop in Memphis, they have like sturgeons that just swim around. Those yeah. fucking things are giant, and they live in the river. <laughs> so you're, you you wouldn't want to ever like yeah. stick your hand into a hole and pull out a catfish then? No, I'm not a noodler. <laughs> what do they call it? Noodling. That's what it's called. It's noodling. <laughs> yeah, I could never noodle. I could shoot I one with a gun. <laughs> That's the kind what about of whales. Noodle. Whales are quite. Much, I've heard like seeing a whale is like a life changing experience. There's well, you see, there's a, a point of diminishing returns. So once they get to be like dolphin size, I'm cool because I can see them coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. Like uh, sharks. Don't. I think it's just freshwater fish that are the size of me. That bother me the most. Oh, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Now I gotta see. So this thing—it's kind of like a big tuna. It's a sunfish. Oh fuck uh, off! I fucking the mola mola. <laughs> now, like, okay, come on—it's it big. Is- it's big, but Jesse, I know. I think I could beat it up. Where's its mouth? <laughs> it, it everywhere. What? Everywhere. The whole body, <laughs> the whole body is massive. <laughs> yeah, those things are huge. They weigh like five tons. Jesus fuck. But that's a saltwater fish, isn't it? Yes. It's I think different. so. Salt so, sea. I don't know why, but it's just freshwater oh, ones. <laughs> Maybe it's just I don't like sturgeons. Maybe that's my issue. Yeah, that might just be it, yeah. Huh. <laughs> Thanks for helping me work my trauma out, guys. Hey guys, it's Trog the Frog here. So I'm doing this little intro for you. Um, the, all the other guys, they were a little afraid about me going off this, you know, going off the bandwagon, talking about all this random stuff. So they they made this for me. So I got I, I guess I've got to read this. So we'll see what, what it is. Um, hold on, let me let's get this. <laughs> After the murder of Frederick. The group followed up on his information. Finding the Red Herring Tavern hidden below the market in the maze of alleyways. You know what? I can't do this anymore. Let me tell you how it really went down. So here we go. We talked with the Frederick guy. We ended up, we get him. We killed him. Uh, we were, we were walking around. I had to try and talk to this, this broad and get the information on where the, the Red Herring was at. And uh, she was she was quite good looking for a human girl, but you know she I don't know there was something about a face. It was just like yeah, but anyway. So we get to the, the red herring, and then there's like a Mr. Clean's brother standing outside trying to act all you know tough and mighty, and so you know me being Trog the Frog, I had to let him know how how it is, and I, I talked him through. We ended up we we got into the place. You know, with no help of uh, anyone else, it was pretty much just me. You know, you know. Speaking of Mr. Clean, that reminds me back when, uh, back when I was home. You know, the couple of servants that we had, they'd always come around and they'd do a lot of cleaning. But there was, you know, they, they never really got, you know, really good in the bathroom. There was always just a bunch of stuff that they leave in the toilets, and you know, it was just that was one of my biggest pet peeves. I just. You know, it made me feel, you know, just like it was a little grungy. So once we got back into the uh, into the, the red herring, um, we were talking with the guy there, uh, whatever his name is, I don't really know. I'm not really the, the best with names, but Trog the Frog is pretty good at a lot of things. So we were talking with him and he told us that Frederick, being the, the bastard that he was, he, he stepped him out of the deal and only delivered half the goods. But he still has the box, so we ended up, we got kicked out of there, he wasn't a very friendly guy, we weren't, you know, we, uh, we might build a little bit of a relationship with him before some other things happen, but I don't know, I didn't get a really good feeling from him. My, my, uh, my big furry friend, 
he convinced one of those stupid fucking sky rats to, uh, to show us where the safe house is. So, you know, we, we got to the safe house. I didn't, I did like a little kind of magical, magical thing, made them all go to sleep. And, you know, pretty much I was the star of the show. There was the one guy that like, did this weird cage thing to Mooney, which I kind of felt bad. You know, I don't like seeing people in cages. It was like when when we uh, when we first started this whole thing. I was in that I was in that cage. It made me feel, you know, no one likes to feel trapped. So, you know, it just reminds me of you know back in the day. You know, we always used to have like a bunch of parrots, and and then we keep them in the cages, and they'd always scream. And I think that's why I'm not. I don't like sky rats because you just heard them screaming all the time so anyway so once we got back in there you know we did what we gotta do we killed all the people uh one of the guys ran downstairs and, and me and mooney we, we were going around i think archie uh archie and and uh the kid they they went around and they found everything well, I feel like the guys are probably going to yell at me here, and I, and I know I don't really do the best of recalling things because I don't really remember a lot of things, and there wasn't really anything on that paper. So I, I think, you know, I think uh, for all the 12 of you, 13 of you out there, I think you're going to really enjoy everything you listen to, and you know, we're probably going to be like one of the greatest things you ever listen to. So yeah, so I appreciate you guys listening to this. Let's get this thing started. They're in a safe house in the middle of the woods. I believe you're still uh, down in the cellar. You got Roy. three, probably uh, in not such a good mood bandits tied to chairs upstairs. And you just found a sack well, of magic goodies. We're going to have to wrap this here up quick and uh, decide what we're doing next. But uh, let's head upstairs and see what if they found anything or got anywhere with those folks. Roy, maybe we can... Uh talk to the old uh, buggers upstairs and see if we can't figure out where this uh, deer tunnel leads. Maybe where uh, our little wizard friend bent your head. Well, if I, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe uh, back to his, uh, his, his partners up, up back in Cusa, but uh, yeah, uh, let's just head upstairs and, and yeah, as long as we right. make sure we get we have Mooney leave before we do whatever we're going to do if it gets too unsavory, but that's that's all I got. Right, I'm going right. to head topside. Um, I will follow behind. After talking with Trog, I'm already outside with the horse. Oh, uh, where's the where's the big guy? I, uh, don't you remember that I, I told him to go outside with the horse because we I wasn't sure what we were going to be doing in here, and you know, he's little. Right, right. You see, maybe the horse might know where the wizard guy went, so. All right. Um, how many people do we have tied up? There's three, two, two or three. All right. I'm just going to um, pull one of my daggers and whip it into uh, the shoulder of the closest uh, guy that's tied up. Make me an attack roll with advantage because he's bound. It's a 13 to hit. Just two points of damage. Like one of them just out one HP, so, but that guy's oh, okay. Fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. You whip, whip the dagger through him. Well, not through him, but into his shoulder. He, <sighs> did you guys gag them? I don't remember if you said it. Uh, uh, I, thought we, I thought they were just bound to the table. I don't think they're gagged. Okay, yeah. they're screams. All right. That'll be enough of that. I'm going to pound the table. No, I'm trying to just get his attention, make him quiet. All right, fellas, we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the fucking way I've been doing it. Your buddy that left, where is he headed? I'm going to pull another dagger and stab it in the table. No one does anything. Which one looks the healthiest? The one that looks the healthiest would probably be Mr. Bandit One over here. Because he got put to sleep immediately and didn't do any fighting. Archie, I think I, I got an idea here. I'm going to go over to bandit number one, roll up my sleeve, and get a little bit of my poison, and put it right underneath the nose 
of uh, Bandit Number One. A dirty Sanchez. <laughs> a dirty <laughs> Sanchez. Oh no! <laughs> All Turning right, into this already. <laughs> You're gonna have to smell that. You just got to tell me where's your captain? Because I'm I'm the captain now. Um, but <laughs> you tell me where your old captain was. <laughs> you see this bandit's eyes get quite wide. He looks he looks pretty afraid, I'll say. Um but not saying anything else. Well we can start with a maybe an easier question. Uh what exactly is the nature of your relationship with the uh Khalil El Shadidi? Are you a uh, are you contracted through them? Are you an active member with them? I guess we're just deciding if you're someone that we want to dispose of now, or if we want to let you go. So just in, any information, we you know, great. When you say that, the somewhat thinly veiled threat <laughs> of disposing of them or not, the one who had a dagger thrown into them. Him, which is the the red the red wearing one in the middle. Uh, looks like he's about to say something. Yeah, that yellow circle one. But this guy on the left <laughs> sort of glares out of a bit, and he ends up shutting his mouth. Shoots him kind of like a dirty look, sternish, dirty look. I'm gonna circle around the table next to this guy here. I'd like to try to drag the. Oh, I guess I'm the wrong fucking person for this. I'm going to try to drag his chair into the other room. I was about to do the same thing. <laughs> I, am, I am so happy I, that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assist him in doing this because I was, I was literally thinking along the exact same line. Okay, if, you both, if you both do it, don't worry. Don't worry about this. Whole check. <laughs> All right, because it was a 14, <laughs> which is actually okay. pretty good. But... Actually, yeah, with a 14, I want to let you do it. If you want to do it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. I want to do it by myself. <laughs> I, I see just... that he is doing great. <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want to drag, drag him into the, to where the cellar is, you mean? that? Extra, I want to like, get into this, into this other room and I'm going to kick the door closed behind me. Cool. Whatever okay, happens there. out there is separate, but I am now in this separate room with this guy. Okay. I'm going to position myself near the door just so I can kind of oh, try to hear both rooms in case something you're in the room with them you're not outside even. me yes i'm in yeah. here okay yep i'm in here the door's closed okay so you guys see archie drag this guy around close the door um i mean it's only like a thin wooden wall so if you really tried to listen in you'd be able to all right yeah i'm just gonna just to try to keep an eye or an ear on both both uh santa prisoners i'm gonna reach i'm gonna pat around my belt see if i have any more daggers I believe I carry four of them, so I'm going to pull one of my, my third dagger out. I'm just going to kind of flip it around in my hands. All right, well, seems to me that you're uh, the one in charge here. Do you like living? If you're going to kill me, just do it. You'll get nothing. I might get nothing from you, but uh, seems like your buddies might be a little bit more keen to talk if I cut your fucking head off and throw it on the table. That's their prerogative. Well, you'll find the one be quite difficult for him. He had a problem of speaking before, which we remedied. Hmm. So, uh, you're into cutting tongues out, huh? Yeah, that's what I like. I like dirt and dirty shit, too. And cutting your head you off would must. be too painless. I'd rather start at your toes. And while he's in that other room, actually, as soon as yes. that door closes, well, I, we we thought that guy was a little bit rude, you know, just interrupting you. It seemed like you were about to say something. He still looks uh, pretty good. Or only a persuasion. Do you want a persuasion or an intimidation? I I didn't pers- frame that as intimidation. <laughs> oh, yeah, seemed pretty uh, okay. I, 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 I did roll. I did roll a natural twenty though. Okay. <laughs> um. He's still, you know, just based on the expression of his face, he's still a bit fear. You can sort of see his eyes darting towards the door where uh, Archie had just dragged his compatriot. Um, but he looks a, he looks less tense as far as his body language goes. But he does still look, you know, somewhat 
nervous, worried, yeah, given the situation he's currently in. I'm a, I'm aware that maybe the way that you're looking at all this is that there's a nice one of us and a mean one of us, and you know, one of us is going to try to bond with you. Uh, I'm just going to let you know that my companion who just left the room, uh, he, I, I know that he kind of comes across a little mean and a little bit like there's an edge to him. He's not the mean one. Uh, he's not the nice one. We're all kind of the mean one. Now, right now, I'm just trying to give you an out because I have done enough shit today and I don't really want to put in more work than I have to. But uh, if you're going to push me to that, I enjoy what I do. So it's uh, honestly, it's up to you how we want to proceed with this. Are there are any flies or insects going around? Uh, it's getting near... The sun's pretty much almost down at this point. Or no, the sun was already down, I believe. It was dark when you guys arrived. So yeah, there's gnats and, you know, mosquitoes, various bugs. I want to... I'm going to shoot my tongue out at one of the mosquitoes and catch it and eat it. So yeah, I've seen this guy do some pretty crazy things. When he sees you do that, he flinches. <laughs> not, you know, not expecting that to happen. Well, and, and the way that I see it, there's two of you here which it seems a little bit redundant to me. So, uh, I mean, we can either go at random, one of you keeps on breathing, the other one doesn't, or one of you can prove yourselves more valuable than the other. So you got about, I don't know, Trog, what do you think? Does, uh, does a 10-second countdown sound uh, a little bit too That's, a, too that's much, pretty or? generous there. I was thinking like five, maybe three. Five? Oh. Well, there you go. And he's he's just as much of a dickhead as the rest of us. So we'll go from five. So I, I'm going to count down from five. And when I get down to zero, one of y'all is going to die. So you can choose amongst yourselves who that person's going to be. So five. Four. As you, as you start counting down, he sort of <laughs> like, aud- audibly swallows. You can't get anything from him. He has they've, uh, they've cut out his, I forgot how to say fucking cut. They've cut out his tongue. Well, I'm going to look at the guy whose tongue is out. You know how to write? Nods, yes. Well, there you go, then. Now, if I give you something to write with and something to write on, are you going to r- give us the answers that we need? Nods, yes. Kind of. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to try. He also looks very nervous. <laughs> All right. So, right now, if it was just me, I'd get rid of this other guy. Because... He's not really necessary at the moment. But Archie and I just recently had a conversation and I've become aware of some of my faults. And I, I want to make sure that I run it by you before I do anything a little bit too too dire and something that you can't take back. So um, my thought is getting rid of this guy right here. And I'm just, I'm just going to like tap him on the forehead. Now, uh, putting it up to majority vote, is that something that you are okay with me doing? Or should... Should I wait? Should I? Here's my thought. Let's uh, let's make sure that this guy can actually write, and then I agree with you. I mean, we can we can get rid of the other guy then. But I, I want to make sure that he can actually write before we kill the other guy. Fair enough. That's why that's why I ask. That's good. So uh, I'm gonna look at the guy who has his tongue cut out. We're gonna we're gonna let your arms loose from the chair. Give you something to write with, something to write on. And uh, you're going to give us the answers that we need. Or at least uh, write out a little bit for us. Does that sound all right with you? He makes sort of this strange, almost like strangling noise. You can just uh, nod. Almost, almost like involuntarily. Sort of just like, you know, shudders a bit. You can, t- you can assume it is, yes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get the stuff out, put it out on the table, and free one of his arms. Um, so then he's able to write, and then I'm going to step back away so that way he, if he decides to get a little too uh, squirrely with the pencil or whatever he's writing with, I'm far enough away. All okay. right, so we're going to ask you, uh, I guess the very first question that we'd asked you before, uh, the friend of yours, the one who had taken off, do you know where he's going? For this one, he doesn't write anything, he just shakes his head. You don't know where he's going? Shakes his head, no. Uh, inside check? Yeah, go ahead. You being honest with me? Uh, I rolled an eight. Uh, and you can't really tell either way. Since he's only shaking his head, no voice, you know, it's hard to, hard to gauge, I'd say, based on that criteria. 
Well, uh, okay, all right. How long have y'all been here? He writes something quickly down. Can you make me actually? How about a wisdom check? Because it's in a language that you can presume is it's not exactly the same language, you know, common that you necessarily speak, being that they're from Sitsorma and have their own language. So make me a wisdom check okay. to see if you can to make, to understand it. Oh, uh, bro. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. You can't, you can't make out all the words. You do recognize the number three. Jesus Christ. Uh, Trog, can you read any of this fucking bullshit he's writing? Uh, let me do a wisdom. Yeah, make a wisdom check. Sixteen. Three days. Well, yeah, it looks like they've been here for three days. We also know now that he can write, so um, if we want to get rid of the other guy, we can. Um, All right, uh, just to, before we do, um, uh, I'm assuming that what you know, are you on the same level as your two companions here? Or are you, uh, uh, is there any information that they might have that you wouldn't, or are you guys kind of all clued into this together? We're all, we're all equals here. Hey, fan-fucking-tastic. You, you keep an eye on them. I'm going to go over to the door to where Archie is in the other room, and I'm just going to give a little knock. Hey, uh, Speaking of Archie, Archie, the, pre- Archie, the previous few minutes, Archie? what have you been doing, Archie? All right. Well, as, as this conversation's been going on. Yeah. I was trying to give him a segue to get back to his. <laughs> right. Well. Uh, as, before we do that, Mooney, what are you doing? My plan is uh, I'm just hanging out with the horse. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, could, what do you know? <laughs> could I, could I uh, grab you uh, anything? Uh, oh God! How did I make the horse talk last time? Got any apples? <laughs> I do not. Unfortunately, I have a few berries, or I could uh, go find something for you. Can you find me some apples? I'm really hungry. Uh, of course, I can go uh, searching now. Uh, oh, by the buddy. way, I uh, have a question. Uh, once I return, okay. What would what, what would you like to roll? Give me a nature as you wander around the forest looking for apples. <laughs> Whoa, that was a nat twenty, <laughs> bro. You are an yeah, apple. I guess- All the apples. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do we only get a nat twenty searching for apples? <laughs> Can I save this for later? <laughs> Just put it in my backpack. No. There actually is a class that, there's a class that lets you do that, I think. Maybe it was only UA or something. Some sort of like time wizard where you could save your, your good rolls for other rolls. <laughs> you go wander around the forest. Uh doesn't take too long, maybe twenty seconds or so, and you happen to stumble across a little little grove of apple trees. Uh, what what color? What do they look like? Uh, Granny Smith. Oh, uh, wonderful! Uh, I will grab uh, just a handful, put them in the uh, my little pouch. The only thing I'm wearing, and uh, I'll just return to the horse. Uh, hand him one. Uh, here you go. Uh, if you don't mind, Thank I you. have a question. Uh, have, have you have you been here uh, for a while, or did the uh, the people inside uh, bring you? Oh. A horse got much more information. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've, I've been here for a few days. And the second question: uh, Was it them, or did somebody else bring you here? Oh no! It, it, the guys inside the house brought me. Okay, and the hierarchical power structure. How exactly is that? <laughs> Are you the king? <laughs> Who is your master? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I guess uh, that my last question for now. Could you show me uh, any kind of uh, direction of where you came from, or perhaps uh, which way you were heading? Uh, uh, in terms of the sun. Oh, yeah, well, uh, we came from that way. And he sort of motions with his head towards uh, <laughs> the east, which from where you guys are would be across the plains and, you know, the desert into Setsorma. 
Yeah, away from the way that we had come. Away, yeah, away from the way that you guys came from. Gotcha. Uh, thank you. Uh, for now, I may come back to you uh, in the future. I will... Uh, nope. Bring more apples. I have a few on me if, if you need more. And I will sit down and just start munching on one. Thanks. Go back to R2. I've been sitting on a... Uh, I'm, I'm presuming there's crates in this room. Yeah, there's a few like empty. In- sitting opposite him, kind of just tossing the dagger up in the air, catching it. Um. Oh, Roy, well, so you really don't want to talk with me. You don't want to save yourself. Fuck your fucking, your buddy there. This is this decision you're going to make. I'd like to whip the dagger. Yeah. So okay, it go ahead. flies past, like, I want to give him a close shave. Like, whoosh, past the face. Give me a dex. A dex. To make sure I don't accidentally plunge it into his fucking eyeball. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Ooh. Unfortunate. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Natural one. Yeah. Natural one. Nah, twelve. Somehow it uh, it's maybe a bit closer than you had intended. Uh, you can sort of see maybe a few strands of hair slowly drifting off his head. Uh, but it goes past his face. Sticks into the wall behind him. He's not going to react much. His eyes, you can notice his eyes widen a bit as he sees the dagger coming towards him. But <clears throat> uh, other than that, not too much of a perceptible, rea- percep- yeah, perceptible reaction. All right. You know, well, I can respect that. Silence, especially in, uh, in my line of work, it's very, very commendable. I've seen some fucked up shit. Done some fucked up things for some fucked up people. But, you know what? Never once dropped a dime on anyone. I can respect that. However, it's also my job to get people to drop dimes. So, are you going to make my job hard for me? Or, are we going to make this uh, quick and easy? I'm going to pull my other dagger yeah. out, and I'm going to start walking towards yeah. him. Slowly. Not quickly, just kind of mo- meandering. You will do what you must. I will also do what I must. Hmm. Well, I'll do what I must, Aurora. I'm assuming he's wearing, like, a boot of some sort. Yeah, he's got on the club. Basically, just leather armor. Leather armor? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whip the bo- the the dagger into the boot, like right into the top of his foot. Okay, did you do that? Steel toe mm-hmm. jokes on you. <laughs> Your dagger shatters. <laughs> he sort of uh, he doesn't really scream like the other guy screamed, but he definitely lets out sort of like, you know, like a gasp of pain. I'm gonna walk. So over the door. Door. And I'll say I'll say at this point you can sort of hear, um, kid tapping on the door. Come in. Uh, hey, Arch. Um, just wanted to let you know I'm going to close the door behind me. The other guys, we want to talk. We don't need this one. Unless, Have you gotten anything from him? Is there uh, any? Nah, nah. I, I was actually right. just starting to have some fun with him. But if it's going to be easy, well, I'm going to bend down, pick up my dagger, and in the same motion, slit his throat. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I, 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 I was coming here uh, to see if it would be okay with you if I killed the other one that was in that room. And I think that I just got to go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go do that first. Um, but before this happens, Archie, can you make me another Dex check? Ooh, nat twenty. <laughs> okay, no, it's just just for something silly. So to throw, you're prepared this time as the you know the sorts out. You you managed to get out of the way before it drenches you. Oh, I kind of wanted some. Oh well, for the with a nat twenty, it's, it's your it's your choice. Then with a nat twenty. <clears throat> I want, I want it like just a little bit of like a, a little spray on them, like just enough. T- so when I walk out, you know the person in there is probably not alive anymore. <laughs> well, I would say you get, you get, you get some, clothes, you get a bit on your face, a bit on your clothes. Yeah, obviously your dagger. Right. Is to his blood now. I was wondering if you'd be interested. So it's we're gonna get the information that we need from this other guy. So that's the first part of this done. Second part of this, and we talked about this is. 
potentially framing this whole thing as if it was a rival Thieves gang that had come in and, and fucked their shit up. Right, right. I was wondering how creative you wanted to get with that, and if that might be something that you would be interested in getting started now, while we're getting the information from the other guy. The idea that I had, I'm just picturing it. Uh, so, like, I'm gonna put my arm around you and kind of, like, do, like, a grand sweeping. Imagine this, alright? You already got a cut started on this guy's head. I say just take the rest of it. And we got a bunch of those dire badger fucking things that are out there. Take off one of their heads. Put one of their heads on this guy's body and hang them either outside or sit them inside here somewhere. We can we can we can lay out some of the alchemist fire that we picked up from uh, uh, from the ship, load it up in front of the door, put it around the place, and set it up like booby trap it. So when his friends show back up, open up the door, or come back inside, they see oh shit, something real bad happened here. Boom, the place fucking explodes and take a couple more with them. Uh, and we leave the place intact enough that the survivors, whoever lives through it, looks around and realizes, oh, fuck, like we just got hit. So that was my idea, at least. I don't know if you had any kind of spins or notes, but uh, I think oh, that I would can. really track into their heart. Like, oh, man, these people mean business. Right. Uh, I like the uh, putting heads on wrong bodies. That's fun. It's delightful. However, I was thinking I'm a big fan of Ladley and Pele. so. We stick a couple bodies out back, with you know, after the explosion, and we carve our messages into their fucking chests. Yep, I was thinking that, uh, or just painting the wall with something. I don't know if we would want to destroy the place I, or if we I'm want to try to get to the inside. I'm gonna point to my face and I, oh, I think I have the perfect paint bro here. Frog, while they're inside discussing their plan, what are you doing with these other two guys? <laughs> um, <laughs> So the one that we're going to kill, I just want to... Is that the one that I put the um, the Dirty Sanchez on? No, you put that on the guy with no tongue, which is why he didn't say anything. <laughs> so wait a minute here. Dirty Sanchez is, is this guy here. The guy on the right, That's, yeah. The guy on the left is the guy you were talking about killing. The guy on the right is the, is the one tongue guy. Okay, and then this guy is dead. Yeah, that guy's gone. Yeah, I'm going to roll up my sleeve again, kind of get in front of him, and then just I'm just going to start painting on his face with my poison. Fuck. What color is your poison? Or does it just, like, translucent? Um, I mean, there isn't really anything that says whether or not. I want to say... It's Beyond. to be purple. Purple. Okay. So yeah, imagine this almost like it's not like glowing, but almost this weird, almost toxic ooze color purple. And as you're over here painting on it, so he's trying to sort of like squirm away and sort of wiggle off, but you know, tied to a chair, can't get very far. Are we talking like the goo from Power Rangers purple? That's what I was, that's I what know. I pictured. Honestly. That's then, immediately right. <laughs> then it's that. All right. Well, I, I'm going to let you be in control of the the messaging part of uh, of this whole thing, um, and I'm going to walk back out and see him finger painting <laughs> the guy's <laughs> face. What did you paint on him? Does he look like a cat or something now? Just a dick. <laughs> um, I, no, I'm going to do. I did trog just across his forehead. Want to do like a little like. Stick figure dot, uh, getting stabbed on his cheek. <laughs> just, I want to kind of like pretty much paint like a mural of what just happened um, there before. So as you guys come out of this side room, you do see Trog <laughs> <laughs> painting these things on this guy's face as he tries to sort of squirm out of the way. It does fade. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't stay on like paint as it gets absorbed through the skin. Uh, but it stays on, you know, marks of it for maybe like a minute or so as it's in the process of entering this guy's body. Well, so he's not dead yet. He's just like writhing around. Not dead yet, but he is soon to All start right. taking poison, taking poison damage. That, that works. I'm going to talk to the, the other guy. 
Now, if you do a good job for us, we're not only going to let you live, but we're going to let your friend there live too. All right. And what my companion there is doing is trying to impress upon you the importance of giving us answers in a timely fashion. So, uh, and in an accurate fashion. Uh, so I, I guess, I guess we can get started if uh, you'd be so inclined. Yeah, I had to say, you guys are really lucky that that guy passed the Constitution Saving Throw for the first time Trop poisoned him. Because <laughs> he only has one. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you just almost, almost killed both of them by accident. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, shit. That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> all right, so if we just kill them all, then it's a fucking yeah. <laughs> don't get any information. Then the horse is the one that supplies us. <laughs> like we need the only one. Like I walk out just successful. red. Rudy's <laughs> like I just fed a horse some apples. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, are there any swords any laying around this uh, safe house? No, you will remember that kid threw all the weapons out the window. Oh, that's right. So they're all I laying did. scattered around outside. So. I just like to scurry out front, grab a sword, and come back in. Cool, yeah, there's a, well, uh, there's two short swords out there, a crossbow, and I believe a war pick. I just I just want a um, short sword. I, I, it's yeah. going to be easier to cut heads off with a sword than a dagger. I'm not even going to keep uh, it. Nice to see you, uh, Archie. Uh, would you like an apple? Um, my hands are a little bit dirty right now. Let me finish what I'm doing. I'll take you up on that offer later, buddy. Oh, got it. No worries. How's it going with the horse? Uh, he's doing well. Uh, I actually had another question. Uh, Shoot. Mi- Mr. Horse, uh, w- would you like to stay or uh, leave with us? Well, I guess if I stayed tied up here, I'm just going to die. <laughs> I, I, I'd agree. So I guess I'll come with you guys. Uh, great. Uh, <laughs> do you have a, a name? Oh, mm-hmm. you can call me George. I prefer Charlie, but George works too. <laughs> Am I outside I love at this point? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Archie, you're, you're, just, you're, just, you're just staring at Mooney as he's making horses. <laughs> he's, right, right, he's making horse noises. <laughs> I'm standing covered in blood holding a sword. <laughs> All right, well, um, cool. I'm just going to turn around, walk back in the building. If you do, I'm going to whisper to you before you go back. Just to wait until you come out with that art project of yours, until we finish up with him. Uh, he's working well with us. I don't want us to change the dynamic right now more than we have to. Right. As you come back gotcha. in, the guy on the left starts coughing up a little bit of blood. Oh, we're running out of time. Better get back to it. Right. Ah, I'll, I'll keep you. I, oh, I won't keep you anymore. I'm going to walk back in the room. And you're just going to hear a, a <laughs> wet thump. Godspeed, Arch. All right. Uh, okay, back to it. Back to it. So you were here for three days, you and your companions. So presumably you don't know a whole lot of places in the area uh, and a friend of yours who had just took off also is not very familiar with the area so can you list down the places that you guys have been to that are local that you think you may have gone to he scribbles down again uh, you can make, uh, it just says no local no oh, all right well who who's in charge of moving the goods from Cusa to here or from here further east he writes first. He writes down. He can that says no names, uh, and then he writes down we return. All right. So you guys, you travel quite a bit then. How far is your journey east? He writes down the name Genpei. Genpei. All right. Do I know where this? Do I know where this is? How far? A wisdom or history, maybe. His, history might be better. Yeah. I, it's fine. I rolled a one, two minus one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 a city. It's a fairly large city. You've heard of it before. You probably couldn't say exactly where it is, but it's not like some unknown place to you, even with a one. All right, and that's is that where your group is based out of? He nods his head. Yes. 
All right. And uh, Sharaf, Sharif, uh, the leader of your little club, is he there as well, or is he coming out this way? He sort of just shrugs his shoulders, as if to say he does. He doesn't know. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, I get that. Uh, how long have you been with the group? He holds up his hand. So it's five, five, five years. Five years. And he, he nods, yeah. All right. Um, and I notice you're, you're, you're moving further west. You seem to be some of the very first that are heading out this way. Not including those of you who were here, how many people did you arrive with? Not, not including the ones that you guys already killed. I mean, yeah, like uh, how many, how many more people uh, of your group are here? Oh, he can't. Yeah, he writes down. Um, God, how many were there? But I can't remember the exact number of bandits who were in the house. Basically, the people that were in the house were the people he came with. Is <laughs> what his message says. I think there were five or six. All right, five, and then from Cusa, you you've met them, I imagine. Uh, he nods. All right. How many? Uh, when we were there, and we we had spoken to them previously, I think there was three, four. There were four of them, plus the there bouncer. Were, there were three plus the bouncer, so four total. So four total. He holds up two. When you right. ask about the ones that come from Pisa, he holds up two fingers. At this point, are the honey badgers like just laying out there on the floor? Honey bag, excuse me. Dire badgers. But yes. Dire badgers. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to just come out significantly more bloody and drag the, one of the bodies into the other room. Not say a word, just go about my business. Okay. So you, you guys see Archie come out almost head to toe in blood now. Almost as if he like, I don't look at this guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even acknowledge that he is doing any of this. Well, he grabs a dire badger, which is not far off from being about the same size as him. <laughs> Makes, you know, some heavy dragging sounds as he pulls it into the room. Um, at this point, the guy on the left uh, basically just slumps forward, head hits the table. You can see sort of almost like rabies foam in the corners of his mouth. Oh boy, he is not looking still, good. Um, still breathing as far as you can tell, but... Okay. Uh, and DM, no, just because I came over from our from our last game, uh, you had sent us the uh, item cards for the stuff that we had recovered. Do we know what was in the box? Um, you didn't try to open the box. Is that who has that right now? I might. I don't think. I think it's in the cellar still. It was kind of just in a sack downstairs. I'm not sure if anyone brought it. It was upstairs either- with them. I, I was carrying it originally. Uh, we can say yeah, I'm holding on to it. It doesn't. One of us. Had, one of us. Yeah, we definitely it. brought the that. back up. I at least yeah. had, had the bottle of oil that I was about to. Feed oh, that's the true. Horse. You guys, you guys did. You guys did dole out the items. I believe. I believe Trog kept the dagger. Archie kept the necklace. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the box. You guys can decide amongst yourselves who has it. Mooney has the right, oil. and it was there was no way to open it, right? We didn't find any hinges or anything. Is that you didn't, you didn't see any, but you guys didn't uh, really try it. I, tr- I tried okay. to break it, but you said no, yeah, that's right. All right, so, um, I know a lot of items come through here, um, going one way or the other, but the box that you that y'all had. Was there any determination as to what it was or what was in it? He shakes his head no. Uh, you guys never found that out. All right. Um, I'm going to look over at Trog. Is there anything else that we that we had that was pressing? You know, point, think... And on the left gives one last sort of shudder, convulses, and then he sort of just slips sideways off his chair, hits the ground. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh... I was saying, Trog, you uh, had any other questions? Yeah, I think uh, I think now we we pretty much we got everything. Um, yeah, kind of hit the nail so. on the head. So, um, oh oh oh, uh, uh, you guys moving out this way? Have you had any contact with any of the um, established 
thieves guilds, groups, gangs that were in the area? Have any of them reached out to you either positively or not so much? Thanks is that no. No, no enemies or anything that, that y'all are aware of? He writes down many enemies in the east. Yeah, yeah, I get that. None from the west though, none of the west, none from the Empire or how about the chain? Does that does that uh, ring any bells to you? Right then again, uh, the gist of it is he's heard of them, uh, but his organization and that organization have not any like formal contact. Uh, At I this gotcha. point, I'm gonna drag the uh, my new my new toy out the uh, out of the room. Um, what you're oh. looking at is the body of the bandit that I had drug in there. And I had taken the head of the dire badger, positioned it onto his body after removing the bandit's head. And then I took the sword that I had carried in there and drove mm-hmm. it through the top of the dire badger's head, pinning it to the body of the bandit. That is exactly what I had in mind. We are, we are so in sync. Uh, Arch, did you have any other questions for uh, for our friend here? No, um, oh, I believe you touched all the big ones. I, from what I heard, um, just quickly, uh, did you make any promises to keep him alive? Because I'm running well, out of uh, room for like the the thing that I was writing. Plus, also, he's seen all of our faces, and it'd be really unfortunate yeah. if no, I, he I, I, fingered I, us. So, well, wait before you throw it at him. <laughs> wait, did that just happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't throw it. I was, I was motioning like I'm gonna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, we're we're handle it, Arsh. No, no worries. No worries. All right. Promises all right. were made. Promises will be kept. Everything will everything will work out. Uh, Trog, do you have any you do, other questions? You do what you do. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go I back really, to you. I really have. It looks great, questions. by the way. You're fantastic. Um, but I, I'm I, I don't have any more questions. I've just been pretty inspired after seeing Archie's uh, little project. So I got I got some ideas of my own. Oh yeah. Well, uh. I, I'm 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 ugh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, what did you say your name was? Talking to the to the bandit guy again. We've been yeah, incredibly rude. <laughs> he writes down his name, Mustaf. Mustaf. All right. You you have been fantastic with us. Um, you've been a gracious host. Uh, I do just have. One more question, and then this will be the end of it. Uh, sorry. In the five years that you've been with this group, I know you guys dabble in um, buying and selling stolen items. I know that probably the group that you're a part of has been involved in some shadier stuff. Have you personally been involved in anything like that? I mean, as you can see, we, we're kind of connoisseurs of the lifestyle. So I, I just, from one person who enjoys that kind of life to another is there anything that really stands out in your time with this group? Anything you're particularly proud of? You're right. You're mostly just fencing stolen items. It's the gist of his message. All right. All right. Just items, never people or anything. Not my department. All right. Um, oh, I lied to you. There was one more question. If we decide to to head east for one reason or another. Is there a way that we could uh, be in touch with someone in your group? Is there a certain message or code or uh, a way you welcome one another, just a way to kind of get our foot in the door? We're always for hire. He's going to draw a symbol on the piece of paper. Um, that vaguely you, you would sort of know what the crest of said Sormo is being as they're one of the, the major powers in the world, um, which is out of sort of like a black owl. Um, it, it's similar to that, 
but obviously very crudely drawn. All right, he'll go draw that on the paper. All right. And this is, you just flash this, and it's kind of like a badge of, of some sort, just a welcome. Uh, he writes down, it may get you in the door. Fair enough. Well, uh, again, you've been great, and uh, um, I hope whatever gods you believe in take kindly to you. And I'm just going to look over at Trog and be like, All right. We got we got the, the Badger Man here. And, uh, you know, not a big fan of Sky Rats, but I, I kind of want to draw some inspiration. And uh heard of this thing called the Blood Eagle. So let's uh, let's get going. He can't. <laughs> he doesn't have a tongue either, so that kind of works out. I've always wanted to try it, so... Yeah, at some point, at some point during all of this, I'm going to leave. <laughs> you don't want to be involved <laughs> in this part. So, so uh, don't talk about it. Be about it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I seem super excited uh, with all of it, and but there, there becomes at some point during us doing all of this that I realize, oh shit, this is really real. And I, I leave the place for like maybe five, ten minutes uh, before I come back. I like kind of take some time to steal myself before I. Mooney, you see a kid walk out, take some deep breaths, sort of gaze wistfully into the oh, sky. If you actually, if you, if you see me come out, you see me throw up. Kid, I, are you okay? Uh, do you need an apple? Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in putting anything <clears throat> in my stomach right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey Mooney, uh, do you mind you and your friend there just heading up the trail away, George. And keeping a look at hey, George? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> if you if you two wouldn't mind just um uh, just going aggressive. up just a little ways, uh, so you don't so you don't um uh, in case anyone comes up the road or, or whatever, just um past the tree line there, just uh, close enough where we can see you, but just far enough away that uh, uh, in case you can see someone <clears throat> see someone coming. Uh, yeah, sure, sure uh, no problem. Uh, yeah, can, can I add off towards, okay. I guess, just like the apple patch again? And then I just wanted, I just wanted to take a look around. Is there anything I'd spot? Anything interesting? Or Roll me a per investigation. A per Ooh. investigation. Uh, ignore that. Investigation. Oh, Hudson, would you roll? Hudson rolled a nat twenty. I don't believe that. No, it's just a, it's like a wow, thrill. wow. Hudson found a deck of many things, <laughs> <laughs> bro. On a side note, just looked up Blood Eagle. That's yeah. pretty neat. <laughs> uh, so you know I'm gonna I mean, your browser history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, figured, you know, I should probably start running a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> At least incognito. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do it in the show Vikings, so you just look up that. They do. That's true. I think that's what they did to the one character in Midsommar, too. Really? Didn't they do that in, in Matilda? Barn. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so George and I are just going to be chilling by the uh, by the apples again till we get some yeah, kind George of notice. Is, George is walking around. He's just munching on anything he can put in his mouth. All right. Uh, when I come back in, I sent um, I sent Mooney away for a little bit in case we do anything that he'd be able to spot from outside. Um, just a reminder: we got to get out of here. Uh, so whatever we're going to do, we should do it. And, Make sure to get rid of any traces of ourselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm just about done here. You know, I gotta say, you, you're humans. Your anatomy is pretty interesting here. So I'm, I'm just about done. Um, <laughs> you, you know, second. It's like how humans dissect frogs, but in reverse. <laughs> that was what Bro. I was going to say. Bro. <laughs> this is Jesus. fucking wild. All right. All right, we and um, murder hobos so quick. 
I don't, this is not murder. Hobo. This is something else. This is <laughs> we've evolved. This is somehow more horrific. <laughs> yeah, honestly, All right. if, you just burn, if you just burn down the orphanage, it would have been better. I think. Well, the orphanage. That's, that's that's just that's innocent kids. These people. Hey, that guy had a wife and kids. I go. I go from sparing God. the pirate <laughs> at the beginning of the campaign to this. All right, you know the uh, the duality of man. Um, anyway, your artistic right. expression is completed. Yeah, sure. and uh, on a fast forward through it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, Archie and I just anymore. Archie and I together are gonna um, make sure we get the thieves can't just right whenever we're right. writing everything out. Um, I I would know the symbol of the chain, um, so I would add that somewhere in there. And I didn't know if what you had in mind, uh, Jesse, with what you wanted to paint uh, to write Basically out on the wall. Just, uh, something along the lines of stay out, you're not welcome. Um, yep. This is our turf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So, yeah, we yeah. do that together. Um, and then the inside of this cabin is just a fucking horror house. Um, like think House of a Thousand Corpses, like just fucking <laughs> wild shit. You said there were no shutters to these windows. Are they perpetually left open to the outside, or is there a way that we could close? There are shutters, but they're kind of broken. I mean, you could probably you uh, could put them in front of it, but there's no guarantee they would stay there. I'm gonna do that as part of it too, um, Archie. I do think that we should booby trap this, or just to just to leave a little chef's kiss on the whole thing. Uh, just a parting a gift to whoever comes back. Absolutely. All right. Um, so I want to take the, uh, basically, right before we leave, um, I'm going to set up, in essence, a bucket over the door trap <laughs> of alchemist fire. So you open the door, the vial falls. Whoosh. Whoosh. Roll me a... Ooh, deck wisdom setting traps yeah but you make it a wisdom until I think of something better <laughs> of wisdom okay maybe dexterity because you're trying to balance a vibe I think yeah. dexterity sounds good yeah yeah Mick give me a dex okay think fuck I'm a halfling <laughs> halfling luck you know the natural one I'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Not much better. <laughs> the next thing you see is Archie run out of the house on fire. <laughs> Eleven. It's not much better. You don't light yourself on fire. Um, you you put the alchemist fire up there. It looks good to you. You're not exactly sure whether it's going to work or not. Uh, but, it, you know, it looks serviceable. Okay. As far as traps go. All right. And uh, let's head back. Well, maybe first to Cusa. And uh, back to our room, get ourselves cleaned up, get rid of that that box that we have uh, with all the blood, Frederick's blood in it, and um, head head <laughs> back blood to blood. Uh, head back to asparagus, aspagus, and uh, we can meet meet with our employer uh, right away. Um, do we want to? Because that the guy who got away. And at this point, I'm assuming we're moving toward where Derek is, where Mooney is. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's my question. Would it be reasonable to assume that I would have another outfit in my bag? Like, do people... I, I've never under, like never really known this. Do, do people carry more than one outfit? Or are you just I mean, perpetually in the same clothes? I mean, you'll, I have your, like you'll have your armor, base layer. which I'm not sure what kind of armor you're wearing. I'm Some not. Leather armor, I'd imagine. If you didn't wear armor, your AC would be like 10. My AC is 13. That's leather armor, I believe. So you okay. have leather armor on. Okay. Um, and obviously, you're not just wearing that against, like, just your naked body. So you do right. have, this, you do have you know, undergarments and such. Well, I, right? I've already you described have, my outfit. Like yeah. it's, it's just kind of like black, black on black on black. I would yeah. assume the armor's underneath my tunic. 
Yeah, if you want to have it that way, yeah, sure. I mean, it, you can have okay. like dyed black leather armor. Wow. Uh, but now, yeah, you know, I'll say you guys all have at least one change of clothes. Right. Because I'm path. very bloody, and I would like yeah. at least like to change my outer layer of clothing <laughs> before you walk back into the populated town. <laughs> right, right. And um, can I look to see? Is there any kind of like water source? Around the cabin, uh, you guys in you guys, there is a well, uh, but it looks pretty dry. Okay, there, there, you didn't really see any rivers. Um, I mean, there was a river near Cusa. Okay, but on on your way out farther east, you didn't happen to pass by any rivers or streams or anything, really. Nothing. No water sources anywhere near this cabin. Not that you guys have seen, no. Okay, well, whatever. Well, it uh, is what Mo- it is. Mooney, Mooney said he can create water previously, yeah. I think. So. Oh, I'm not letting that fucking hairy fucks piss on me. That's what I was going to say. I thought he just peed on stuff. Right. I don't know. I'm not letting him piss on me. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to tying up loose threads, um, we'll get back, get rid of Frederick's stuff, but the guy who had seen our face presumably is going back to Cusa to talk to the people that we'd previously talked to. Right, and they can, right. They can corroborate, they can corroborate who, what we look like. Um, well, um, there's only five of them potentially in totals that are there. So is that something that we want to nip in the bud or do we want to just go and let the, let the cards fall as they may? Right. I don't know. Um, I mean, can't prove it was us, can they? Um, well, they don't have to. They don't. They're not. They don't have a burden of proof. Like they, they can just. <laughs> I just want to kind of there's say no, something. There's no that, courts here, Archie. I'm pretty sure that they'll be able to tell it was us, just because if they, if the guy says that he's solving problems. Um. Yeah. I don't know about you right. guys. I haven't seen many of the frogs around. Well, right. you, you came from a town. Everyone that you knew for a while was other frogs, right? Because the town. Yeah, I mean, I mean, here, I haven't seen. Oh, right, right, right. I got you. I mean, yeah. back when I was home, I mean, there was frogs everywhere, and it was great. I miss, I miss those times, you know. With, uh... yeah. Anyhow, we're we're happy to have you, but I mean, you're right. You definitely between you sure. and Mooney, you guys definitely uh, bring some some attention to us. Uh, so, is that something that we want to try to try to just? Hit and, and be done. Are with you it? suggesting that we uh, go to the red herring and clean house, or a kind of am? Because my my biggest fear is, let's say they get in contact with the chain for some reason or another, and then over the course of them talking, because let's say maybe they talk instead of just killing each other they realize, oh, the chain wasn't involved in this. It was this other group. And then they describe us. And now we have them and the group that we were trying to right, blame right. the whole thing on coming after us. We uh, should at least and I already have them. issues with the chain. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. Um, oh, boy. I suppose. We there we go killing we again. Kill, killing again. <laughs> What if? Because I'm feeling kind of weak. I don't know about you, but that fight back there took a lot out of me. Right, right, what if we did. just? What if we just went to? Oh God, I feel so dirty saying this, but what if we went to the local authorities and gave them all the information that we had on this group, and then we let them mop everything up? We just say, hey, we're we're just some people that got our stuff taken from us. This is what the group was. This is what we learned, and we let the law handle it. And that way, we don't have to worry about dirty in the waters anymore. Right. We did see him using magic. Right. I don't know. I've never been one to get the law involved. Well, we, we don't ever. We don't have to talk to him. We could just write something out and and slip it to someone or. Right, but I also you know, they, just booby trap that door. I'd hate to see some fucking detective. Well, I mean, I'd love it. It'd be pretty cool. Um, but <laughs> well, uh, if anything, 
it would maybe get the authorities pissed off about the chain too. So I, I don't know. I mean, uh, right. I that think might not be probably. A should we just probably burn the house down now? And nah. Not? All that work? No, and we're leaving anyway. All right. I could go either way with it, but I, yeah. I think whatever we're going to do, we're going to have to do it right away. Cause the longer that we, we take, probably have to do it. And um, we're caught up with Mooney at this point, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. So um, one, we get, one thing I got to say, do you think that the uh, the authorities might already, uh, you know, I, I know how things can be with, you know, some shady, shady uh, organizations that maybe, you know, they take a little bit of money for, you know, sweeping things under the rug. You know, maybe they've already done that, and you know we go to them, and then they're, then they're just going to figure out where we're at, or you know we we write a letter, and then if the authorities are accepting money that they shouldn't be taking, there's no money left for them to accept. I mean, we've we've essentially shut down this portion of the operation. I mean, if anything, it just gives them an open door to arrest these people or do away with them or whatever. There's nothing for this organization to hold over them. They, their trade is is going to be fucked for a while. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, fair. any 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 standing agreement that they've had with the authorities here, I can't imagine it's going to stand for long. If, you know, if the if the chain of if if the spying and selling stops. So they just took a major hit. I don't see them bouncing back anytime soon. So. Yeah, you, know, you, you got a valid point there. I don't know. My my whole thing is I I don't feel yeah. Well, that's I'm I like this. It's good. Um, do we have multiple horses to get out here? We walked the whole way. I don't remember how we we walked. Right. We walked. Yeah, walked. Right. Here's the thing. uh, Well, um, what if we run down this magician? Because I mean, fuck, he was injured when he left. He can't be moving that fast. We have a horse. We could probably catch him before he even gets there if we move quick, right? He was also oh, on a horse. If you remember, oh, you guys saw horse. You guys saw horse. Oh, yeah, that's he was, right. yeah, and that was okay. that was forever. Ago. That was a, that been, had to have been a while ago. Yeah. All right. Well, I say we just we just let them handle it. We we write everything out. We make our accusations anonymously and then we get our stuff and we leave and that's the end of it we don't have to further entangle ourselves with these people i'm not ready for another fight i don't know about y'all but i i can't do it. right all right fellas well here's the idea i don't as much as i don't like it i don't disagree and fuck are we ever going to come back to cusa this this town's a I, shithole fucking town i hate it i hate everything about it right um so I could give a fuck less. And as far as the chain goes, they're a bunch of fucking idiots anyway. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'm uh, I'm not really on the best of terms with them anyway. So I mean, what's one more, one more red mark added to the ledger? So yeah. Yeah. well, I've got enough people hunting me down that there's not going to be too much issue if one more organization doesn't like me. So all I say. We can let the we can let the cops know, but we'll fucking dip out anyway. As we're making the rest of our way back, are you, Mooney? Are you able to turn into a like like George here? Can we ride you? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, many people have before. You <laughs> convinced your tribe is just orgy, like all the time. That's. <laughs> Uh, I, yes, I have uh, no more spells left, but I have uh, one wild shape. Uh, I could be a horse. Uh, anybody could ride me. Uh, before uh, George, uh, do you mind if somebody rides you? Go right ahead. Uh, wonderful. Uh, I'll turn uh, into well, a horse, uh, and then anybody can jump on. I'll 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 ride uh, the nasty horse. Uh, hard. You can ride the you can ride the regular one, right? Because I imagine yeah, like even, even wild shape, it's so very. It's almost like deep fur in a way. 
even as a horse. It's very strange. So um, you guys well, are just going to make right. your way back to Kisa then? Yeah. Back to Kisa. That's right. Okay. So journey takes uh, several hours. I mean, it took about six, seven hours on foot. Make it back in about three or so. Um, if you would like to take the opportunity to identify the items you've taken, I will allow you to do so, even though it's not quite a short rest. Right, that's what I would yeah, like we'll, to do. We'll do that. Yeah, do that yeah. along the way. The chain is on. Okay, so I did put the item cards in the Discord. I'm Frog, you have the dagger. Necklace. Yep. Dagger is the bigger knife. Basically, you got a plus one to hit with it, a plus one to intimidation, and the dagger will always be slightly bigger than anybody else's dagger in the room. What is the definition of a dagger? Is a, is a sword technically a, just a big dagger? A sword is not technically a big dagger. You know, magic is it's mysterious. <laughs> you know, we're when just, we're, we're, we're just going to make it up as we go. <laughs> That's like, not a knife. This is yeah, a knife. Right. But you will see Archie almost enviously looking at it. <laughs> As he thinks to himself, wow, that's a big that's a big knife. <laughs> that's a big fucking knife. But if you fail an intimidation oh, yeah. check, your knife is, your knife turns into a wooden spoon. Ah. That's my intimidation. I'm glad that, you know, things are really afraid of frogs. So <laughs> uh, Archie, you got the necklace. It's the chain of unqualified overconfidence. Uh, which is basically, it's a thick gold chain with the emblem on it. Uh, but anyway, once per long rest, whenever you try a skill that you don't have proficiency or expertise in, um, you can basically roll with advantage. But you have to make some sort of statement about how easy it's going to be. And if you fail, you're going to take 1d6 of damage. Fuck. I mean, you don't have to use it. Right. But if you try to use it and still fail with advantage, you'll take 1d6. Okay. Um, the little glass ball, I don't know who has that. Well, uh, once we get back to the place we're staying, I think we should just start a timer. 10 minutes, maybe 15. Get the shit we need and go. We don't want to be sick. So, like uh, I figure... Uh, I don't know how we, y'all's handwriting looks but uh, I can write something out if you don't want to. Um, but I figured one of us, uh, ultimately, I'm going to have to take Frederick's uh, chest with me into my vessel, and then someone will have to hold on to the vessel, because I'm going to be in that until probably we get back to, well, depending on how long the trip is, until we get back to ask. Right. So, or somewhere along the way, we can dump the stuff, and I can pop back out. It doesn't really matter, but the point is, I'm not going to be able to leave the city with you in a traditional sense, I'm going to have to be in the vessel. Right. Sounds like a plan. So, so I can write the letter out also, but uh, if one of y'all's better with words, uh, I'm not very good with words. So maybe, uh, I, I mean, don't know, uh, Trog, I don't know if your hand, if your little frog hand can write. But. Well, I, uh, I think I actually have some pretty good handwriting if I do say so myself. And, you know, being the uh, the performer that I am, you know, I think I have quite the quite the way with words. All right. Well, well in, in that case, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll leave it with you then. And um, uh, if you do that, I'll take care of getting the chest, and um, uh, Arch, it'll be you just getting us out of town. That'll be your big your big thing. Or talking to the bartender to convince him that you know. Uh, Something, you know, just uh, Frederick right, went off right. on his bachelor party. What a crazy time, or whatever. I don't know. Right. But anyway, yeah. So that's that's the, the that's what I'm thinking. The plan could be. Well, right. look at that. We're here. Yep. You guys going to Cusack? You guys can head back <laughs> to uh, to the tavern. You guys are staying at Blue Moon. Right. I'm gonna. It is, it, is, it is very, very early morning at this point. Maybe like 3 a.m. Okay. Oh, I was just going to say, is the uh, bartender up or is he... Uh... As far as you can tell, there's no one in the common room. No one in the downstairs. common room? 
Okay. All right, then I'd just like to head up to the room. I'm assuming there's some kind of wash basin. <laughs> Not in this room. Oh. <laughs> Not at this fine establishment. All right, never mind. You're, you're, you'll remember there's kind of a, almost like a trough of water that's sort of on the outside of the tavern, sort of runs along the wall, like in sort of along the alley, sort of. All right. I'd like to kind of try to get a little bit of the ick, ick off me face. Yeah, sure. Before you go in, you stop by, right. you know, sort of splash, splash yourself off. Right. The blood never really truly comes off, but... I am going to do one last pass through Frederick's room and our room, making sure that we got everything. And uh, then I'm going to pick the chest up, if I can. I'm real struggle with it. And uh, I'm going to use bottle respite and disappear into my vessel with the chest. And and there, I'm just going to sit back, relax, listen to what's going on, and take a short rest. <laughs> I'm going to be in there as long as I can unless they wake me otherwise. Well, short rest is eight hours. I don't know if you guys want to stay for eight hours. <laughs> but Well, I'm, I'm in the vessel regardless. So if they leave, if right. they stay, it doesn't yeah. matter to me. I'm in I'm in the vessel. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you, you, you can pick up the vest and into the bottle he goes. All right. Um, just going to pack me stuff up. Kind of just try to be, make sure we're ready to go. I'm going to turn to Troy. All right, fella. You were writing the note about saying that Frederick was leaving, right? Yep. All yeah, right. don't you got the... I got that. All right, Mr. Mooney, you ready to rock and roll, my friend? I am all set. I would like a nap, but I will do what I have to do. All right, well, I think we should just hit the road and try to get a, as far away from the city as we can. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so if you're all ready to leave, you guys can take the road back to Aspicus. Right, so we, ha we had two horses... And now we have a third one, correct? Now you have George, yeah. So you have the two horses you got from Samuel, as well as this third horse. All right, so Did we, we all have our horse? horse. If we're ready Did to we go, let's a, boogie. Did we drop yeah. the letter off with the authorities? We did not yeah. do that yet. If but. we want to do that, do we want to do that on our way out of town? I figure that would be what we do. Yeah. Uh, on our way out to town, we'll stop at the at the uh, the police station, kind of the medieval police station. <laughs> slide the through the door, the guard's office, guard bear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you'd like to do that, you you guys would remember. You know, you had to come through a guard post to get into the city. You know, have to get the gate. So it wouldn't be hard to do on your way out if that's what you would like. Right. Yeah. Yep, just on our way out of town. Slip it, slip it under the door. I mean, there are guards there. They are awake. <laughs> they do still have to guard the gate. Oh. So you would have to probably do some sort of speaking with them. Or just have the unseen servant drop it off. Right, right. We, we <laughs> don't want... <laughs> that's, that's also we an option. Want the, we don't <laughs> want them to know that it was us that gave it to them. Yeah, I think... Uh... What we'll end up doing here? I'll, I'll get my guy, my super secret spy guy. He'll um, he'll just drop it off at the guard station. He'll take it over to him, and then uh, yeah, maybe I can sing a little song, play a little ditty, uh, play a little song for him, and we can get going. All right, sounds like a plan. Okay, we'll say that all just goes off without a hitch. Um, <laughs> I wanted to hear the little ditty. You can do the little ditty on the way out if you'd like. I'm not stopping anyone. Here's a little tune for you. About Jack and Diane. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find the musical instrument. A true bard uses his body. <laughs> <laughs> what a great ditty. What part of the body was that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. 
that's what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything you guys would like to do on the road? It's a three-day journey to get back to Aspicus, more or less. You will get the benefits of a long rest, unless you decide you're just going to start like fighting everyone you come across. Um, after I use up my final bottled respite and come back out, um, well, we'd have to schedule it, because I wouldn't want to just come out with a body and with a chest. So right. we probably so, would have to coordinate it. About halfway between the two cities, um, I'd like to go roughly... I'm going to turn to uh, Trog and Mooney. I'm going to say, you guys stay on the road. I'll be right back. And I'm going to go probably like a half a mile off the road. I'm assuming it's kind of just open forest at this point. Yeah, there's some small... There's some small foothills to, if you're following the road, it'd be on your right side to the north. And then farther south, uh, there's sort of, we'll say at this point, you guys have crossed the river. Uh, so you're across the river, and then to your south is sort of, yeah, mostly just sort of forest, sparse forest. Right. Yeah, I just want to walk, maybe maybe walk for like 10, 15 minutes off the road into the middle of this forest. Um. And I'm carrying kids' vessel. All right, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a, a good spot for us. So if you want to come out with the body and the chest, I don't know how to I make don't. it come out. I'm just going to kind of rub the <laughs> I, lamp. I do nothing. <laughs> I just let him sit here in the woods rubbing this lamp for a little bit. Eventually, hearing this, I come out. Um, and while I was in the vessel, I carved the symbol of the chain on... Frederick's chest and um, then coming out with the body and with the chest, I just want to find somewhere to dispose of both kind of maybe separating them just a little bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, how are you open the the hole? Are you just going to like throw them as a tree? That's I'm fine. cool. Just leaving them out. I do want to open the chest and kind of throw the stuff around as though like maybe he got attacked on the road and someone tried to get into his stuff. Um, maybe he was robbed or maybe, they were looking for something. I don't know, but uh, I want to try to frame it as though it was the chain that that killed him. Okay, sure. So you can do that. Throw his body down, scatter his belongings, sort of in you know the area around him. Yeah, and then I'll I'll walk back or ride back with Marge, um, so I'm no longer in the vessel for the rest right. of the trip back. I feel rested. Well, I'm getting there. Good time cleaning up my vessel. It was. It was very dirty in there, and I'm happy that it's it's a little bit cleaner, and that there it's one body uh, emptier than it was before. So I'm thankful. Uh, are we going to be doing a lot more of that kind of work? Oh, I don't know. I I kind of didn't plan on it, but I guess we'll see. It's a little the... spicy. It's just the way that it's a bit. Uh, um, not saying I want to live a bland life, but it was just a little, a little bit spicier than that. I had right. Uh, uh, maybe maybe we'll try to steer away from doing too much of it, but we got really into that. Yeah, like yeah, we got, we got really into that. I, I think I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there was. Yeah, I wanted to just kind of like let you guys know. I got a little, I got a little worked up. I mean, seeing all the sky rats, it was, it just it reminded me. I heard of stories of you know your kind and. You guys would actually take my kind and like rip us up and tear us apart and you know, look at our insides and it just it kind of got to me. So I was just kind of like embodying like the sky rats and what people you heard the people do that? Who did you get that from? I've just I, I've heard like here in like taverns and stuff that that's what uh some of you some of you humans that's what uh so, the some of the Sciency, like weird people will do. There's some of the wizards they'll go and they'll like they'll try to uh, do well, this stuff. Well, you can't. Gee, that, that's that's awful. I can't believe anyone would do something like that to a frog. That's terrible. So, I, I'm uh, on behalf of my whole race. Uh, I'm very sorry that you had to you had to hear that and that any of your kind ever suffered because of someone of, of my kind. I appreciate that. I do. 
I'll, I'll, and, uh, I'll be sure to was... turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right. And Mooney, you were awesome as always. You were. It's so great having you with us. My eyes are uh, narrowed a bit. I'll just look over and say uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, have you seen uh, any of the flowers you are looking for? I have not, but I was actually about to bring that up. Uh, I think we should get back to our employer first. Uh, that definitely, absolutely takes priority. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this before. What we're doing is certainly not lost on me. We're, I mean, we're doing this to get information for me. Like Everything that we've done so far has been for me, and I, I recognize that. And I, I want to thank you all for putting the time in and for putting yourself at risk. And I know looking for these flowers, too, is another thing that's for me. Um, so I, I just want to say that once we get to the end of wherever this information we get gets us, I owe you everything. And wherever you want to go next, I will not question it. I will not uh, do my normal bullshit. I will... I will follow you wherever it is that you need to go once I finish. But thanks. Yeah, that's what we're here for. All right, buddy. All right. Oh, bring me the beat, boys, and free my soul. Now, uh, while we're on the road and we have a little bit of time, did we want to think any more about this name? Uh, a thing doesn't really exist until it has a name. Like Mooney, you you weren't even a thing until we called you Mooney. So what? Uh, uh, do we have an idea in mind? Uh, have we put any more thought into that? Right. I thought that was that uh, going to be Trog's Trog's job. You know, I, I got to admit, uh, I I got a little dark there when we were when we were thinking about things. So. I, I haven't really been thinking too much about it, but now that I got a little bit of a clear head, I'm gonna start to think. But I'm, I'm open to some uh, to some ideas. If we want to spitball, we do a little brainstorming. You know, I think you know, like if we if we sit here, and we talk about it. Like that's actually really good. The more we talk, the more ideas that we can get. And you know, yeah, we can. So work it. Uh, what, uh, uh, Mooney? Did you have anything in mind? Anything uh, from your upbringing or uh, from your experiences that kind of could inform uh, an idea here? Give us something to start with. I mean, Mark. he's, I mean, he's we, furry. We could, uh, we could be called the furries. No, that's not right. I, I don't <laughs> think I, I don't agree with the furries because I'm not furry. Well, I don't know. We can, we can keep thinking about it. I, I was just, I right. figured we had some time on the road, maybe. As you're having this discussion, the gates of Africa are slowly coming into view. Well, we're here already. How about that? I like that was about a- ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely horse ride. Uh, real quick, before we before we enter, uh, where's Trog situated next to me? Uh, before we enter, uh, could I talk to you for a second? Oh, absolutely, my furry friend. You want to talk to him alone? Do you want us to to stick around or? Uh, just just Trog. It's in an uh, in, in, in animal thing. All right, yeah. Um, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, we'll Who you we'll be up at the gates there. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be waiting up at the gates there, and then whenever y'all just arrive, um, so don't forget if we get separated or whatever, we are following the names that are on our fake fake uh, papers. Yeah. So he right. did move. Yeah. So you're still Mooney. Mooney. Okay. And Randy. Got it. And Randy. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right, Horatio, let's uh, give him some time to talk. Drug, I am sorry to hear about uh, what the humans have done. I wouldn't say I'm uh, fully invested yet. I wanted to ask, uh, should we worry about them? As I've been going throughout life here, I've learned a very life... The most valuable lesson is to, uh, you know, always keep your head on a swivel. You know, you never, 
I know people like you and I, you know, we, we're different. We we do a lot of things, and um, you know, some of the the human types, they're uh, no matter how much you trust them, you still got to keep an eye on them. So. Uh, I think we're good right now. I don't think that they, like, especially since we're helping them so much. And I mean, without without us, they'd pretty much be be lost. But uh, I think we can uh, we can just watch them for right now. I don't think we need to, you know, sleep with uh, swords or anything. But uh, yeah, just just you know, can do this. Got you. Uh, thank you. Um, it is nice to know there is a. Uh... Somebody in the group. Uh, oh, besides George. Uh, don't forget George. Uh, but right. I, I, I can trust you at least. Twitter, I'm glad I can trust you too. You, it's, a, it's nice to have, you know, uh, finally have a companion that I can talk to because it's, it's been lonely these, these last few years. So. Lonely? Uh, you didn't have too many friends? I thought you were pretty popular. Yeah, you see, I mean, there's a difference between having fans and having friends, you know? Mm. And, you know, everybody loves me, everyone, you know, everyone's a fan of me, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to actually talk and actually have, you know, like a, a frog-to-frog or a frog-to-furry kind of conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as I've, been, uh, as I've been traveling these last few years, it's not like I went around with many people, so... It's this has been a it's been a little nice, been a little nice. Glad I met you, Moody. Ah, glad to meet you. I have missed my family, but I will take in this time uh, as we have it. Uh, looks like we have arrived. Right, you guys uh get it all figured out. Your animal stuff. So. Oh yes. Yeah, you see, sometimes with the moon and him being a Moody, you know, the time of the month, it just you got to talk about these things. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, uh, let's uh, head over to Samuel's, where, where we can meet up with him. He's in that bar, right? The uh, the Red Dove? Right, I believe that's where you send a meeting. All right, um, who has that box? I have it here, uh, in my pouch. Sorry. Uh, well, that, that, no, and I don't apologize. That makes you the most important one of us that's going in here, so... Uh, when uh, we say the magic word, you'll know it when it's said. You bring out that box. Right. It'll probably be just bring out the box, to be completely honest. I don't know why we need all the pageantry. I just wanted to do something special for him. Oh, all right. Bring out the box. Well, anyway. I'll try to remember. All right. Let's uh, head over to the Red Dove, then. Hey, you guys make your way back to the Red Dove. Uh, are you going into the bar or are you going to go to that passage you saw before? I'm going to go up to the bartender. I want to go up to the passage, but does he write, is it the same one from before? The same bartender. Yeah. Yep. Same big hawking mountain of a man. Yeah. All right. I'm going to walk up to him. Do we need to give you the same password we gave you last time or are you just going to let us in? He just kind of, let's say, it just says, uh, me being the back. All right, works for me. And uh, I'm going to head out that way. Rest, you going with him? Yep. Same deal. You guys come down to the uh, long staircase in the back. You see uh, the bartender put a key into a door that has no keyhole. Push it open. And steps inside. Uh, all right, um, Trog, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing what we've been doing. You're you're leading this train. You're the conductor. Woot woot. Let's get in there. Woot woot. What is this? A fucking ICP concert? <laughs> <laughs> you go in. Samuel's got sort of like a desk set up, and you can see he's, he's writing something. You don't really know what he's writing, but it, as he hears the door open, head comes up. He goes, hey, boys. Hey, Sammy. I finally made it back. How you doing? It's, uh, it's good to see you. Hey, I got a, little, Howdy, partner. Got, a little, got a little present here for you. Oh, uh, bring out the box. Oh, the box. Uh, and I'll reach into my pouch and <laughs> pull it out. Uh, it, 
Sorry, a uh, little uh, hairy. And I'll hand it over to Samuel. Well, I'll be damned. You boys actually got it. <laughs> and Did you doubt us? Well, right. What is that supposed to mean? Yeah. I start flexing. I wouldn't say doubt. <laughs> I wouldn't say doubt, but I like to keep my expectations. <clears throat> and some neat, neat little sleight of hand tricks boxes in the pocket before you guys can even really catch where it went. Well, I'll say before he does that, he sort of examines it. You know, moves it around a bit, makes sure it's the actual right box, and then sort of like, you know, slides a hand it into his pocket. Are we allowed to know what what that was? Made a couple of bets on the way over, but... No, I don't think you do. Sorry, boys, wasn't part of the deal. Uh, fair enough, that's not the information I wanted anyway. Just for my, uh, my own record keeping... What else did you boys happen to, to recover from them? Uh, I'm sorry. What did we recover from them? Uh, I got a drink. A drink? Yes. Well, that's, uh, well, we recovered besides... Well, it, was it just the box that we were bringing? Is that all that we, we were taxed to bring back? Am I remembering Boy, it correctly? I don't yeah, think that's any of your fucking business. Well, they did steal them from me, so it's a bit my business. As you can see, I am running the business here. You know, we were tasked to get the box and bring it back. And, you know, anything additional is information we can keep to ourselves, I think. Well, I can see that one's, I can see that one's wearing my chain. (laughs) And and you see him, you see him write that down on a piece of paper. (laughs) It probably looks so good over that turtleneck, though. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Big, thick gold chain with a lion's head on it. Also, at this point, now that we've left Cusa, I put the chain that I stole off that guy on as well. So I, I've, yeah. I've got two chains. You're like, you're turning into Mr. T at this point. And, <laughs> and the pinky ring I stole from uh, <laughs> Frederick. So I'm... I'm Trog, you, you also do notice as you walk into Daniel's underground uh, you know, office, whatever you want to call it, you you do notice your dagger gets slightly bigger. It's always nice to be the biggest guy in the room, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think your I think your tall friend's got that one. So. Uh, not in the places where it counts. <laughs> He's well, right. I'm a grower. <laughs> All right. We did our side of things. Yeah, you did. Well, what do you want to know? I'm going to look at the rest of the group. I'm going to look back away. Well, uh, you had mentioned you had some information about Valkythra. That's what this whole thing was for, was for that information. So anything you got, everything you got about Valk, about him, that's that's what we're here for. You uh, notice that when you say his name, it's almost imperceptible, but he does let out almost a little sigh of sadness. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't know who you're talking about. What did I say that they met him about five years ago? I met your boy about five years ago. In a bad spot, as far as I could tell. Didn't know anything. Only knew his name. No memory whatsoever. Uh, never could get anything out of him. Didn't know much about his past. Uh, I wasn't doing too good myself back then. Had a, you know, spot of my own troubles. But... He reminded me a bit of myself as a younger man, times before these. So I, I brought him with me. We ran together for, for about a year, you know, doing jobs here and there. More business, as you can imagine. But eventually he, f- he fell into some kind of bad crowd. I uh, did my best to try to convince him to, to get out of that group, but wouldn't listen to me. It's always a bit rebellious. From, from when I knew him. I uh, tried, tried to keep tabs on him, but eventually just disappeared. Couldn't tell you where he is now. Besides being out of sorts, did he seem okay? Hurt in any way? Oh, yeah. Fit as a fiddle. Where did you meet him? First time I met him, I was more farther south in the Empire. Somewhere around Kaimans, Bathicus, that area. Which you would know as cities on the I know. Yeah, that's Western Coast. Uh, yeah. Well, Kaimans is where we had set sail from. Yep. 
yeah, that that seems about right. Um, this bad crowd that you mentioned him falling in with, who are they? I don't know. I tried to find that out too, but they're a mysterious bunch. I've got my Any own information networks, but it's almost like they didn't exist. Very strange. Strange how? Well, most groups will have some sort of trail. But these guys, like I said, it's almost like these guys didn't exist. On paper, anyway. You said they're... Um, okay, okay. Did uh, You have no idea where this group is now? Well... Or, or uh, anything? Uh, get us on the right track? I couldn't tell you for sure, but some of, some of my information sources have seen some of them wandering around Schleem. If you're going to look for them, that's where I'd go. Do I know where that is? You know, to be fair, I'm not even really going to make it real. Schleem, you guys would have. Trog, you might not have. Mooney, you might not have. But I rolled a, uh, an 18. So Schleem is... Yeah, so then Trog, you definitely know. Schleem is the capital city of the kingdom of Bradon. So it's on the northern part of the continent. So not the continent that the Empire's on, but the one north of it. And Bradon and Dalhurst and Corlone, and these are the kingdoms that had sort of banded together to fight off the Empire. So Schleem is the capital city of one of those kingdoms. That's so far away. It's I'm going to look over to the other three in the group. I, I can't, I can't ask the three of you to follow me there. It's that's well out of out of our way. All right. Well, I don't have anywhere to be, so I believe you're stuck have, with me, then. Have you done any work up there? Do you know anyone? Have any contacts? Have any where we can? Anyone we can talk to when we get there? Mr. DM, have I ever ventured that far north? Well, you will know that Schleem is not incredibly far from Stillwell, which is the city that um, <laughs> your good friend, whose name I totally just forgot, <laughs> works Her- out. Horace. 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 Schleem is a bit isolated. It's across the mountains. Right. Um, so you might not have specifically have been to Braydon, but Stillwell is not an incredibly far distance away. I right. mean, it would take you yeah. probably a, a few weeks of traveling, maybe, but to cross the mountains. I just realized on but, the map, yeah, they're not too far. All right. right. Um, so I've, I've been there. Before. I've been in the area before. Never been to the actual city, but I can get us on the doorstep. Which uh, direction is uh, Schleem? Northwest. Uh, well, it is uh, heading more towards the forest. So if it gets yeah, me closer, I, mean, I can I can head along with you. What what continent are you from, Mooney? I am from the uh, forest of uh, Falsterson. Gee, you've come so far. You've traveled farther than any of us. You walked this whole way? Uh, no, I originally took uh, one of these ships uh, coming down south, but then it was uh, taken over by the crew that put me in the cage. Wow. Well, um, all right. If you wouldn't be opposed to coming along with me, we can... Maybe head up that way in a couple days, uh, or at least start our journey up that way in a couple days. Trog, what are you thinking about all this? You know, I uh, feel like the music is calling me there, so um, I'm I'm all uh, I'm I'm all about it. Let's do it. Samuel, is there anyone that you know uh, up that way that we can talk to to give us any further? Do we have a name uh, of this group? Sorry. Like I said, there's not much about him I could find out. I did try. Still am, truth be told. 
these kind of groups always uh, put me a bit on edge, you know. So do you have contacts there that we can meet with when we arrive? Well, I've got one guy, very old. In fact, I believe he's now the head librarian in the city of Schleem. Uh, and you guys would know that Schleem is actually quite famous <clears throat> for their extensive library. Think like Library of Alexandria levels of information keeping. So even if, you're look, if, you're look, if you're looking for information on anything, he's the guy I'd ask. What's the name of the library? The name of the library. Uh, it's just it doesn't really have a name. It's just the library. Of, you know, Schleem. Oh, the Schleemish Library. Yeah, yeah the Schleemish Library. When Valkid left uh, your employ to go with this group, did he seem, the last time you saw him, did he seem like he was in duress or that they were making him go or that he was scared or what was he I like? Was head- it's all of his own volition. Yeah, mm-hmm. once someone sets their mind to something, it's very hard to, very hard to talk them out of it. Thank you for the information. I do hope you find him. Yeah, I hope so too. Now, you're going to have a bit of trouble getting this thing. What I can do for you is get you on the way to Stillwell. Uh, right now, Schleem and Corlone, they're, or sorry, Brown and Corlone, they're uh, not letting many ships through with, you know, with all the tension that's going on with the Empire. So I'd recommend go to Stillwell, cross the mountains that way and go up. I can get you on a ship to Stillwell, but I'm not sure if I can get you much farther than that. That was is Horace in uh in the area? Are we able to catch a ride back to him? Oh, well, you know Horace is based in Stillwell. I mean you couldn't say if he's currently there now or by the time you get there or not, since you're not like in contact with yeah, him. Yeah, right. right. I, I didn't know if uh, Samuel had any contact since they were they were, uh, oh, right. They seemed uh, like they were in contact with one another, so I didn't know if he was aware. Me and Horace haven't been in direct contact for a long time. We're still good friends, but, you know, life takes you different directions. Good. There's All a right. good chance he's right, up in Stillwell, but I couldn't tell you for sure. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll take whatever, uh, whatever we can get. Uh, any idea when we would have to set sail? How long we'd have? Well, I reckon, uh, Boat's leaving in about probably about midday. Oh, midday today. Oh, tomorrow, excuse me. Midday tomorrow. Say it's about 4 or 5 p.m. currently. Does that seem all right with you all, or do we want to take some, some more time here? Oh, I think that sounds perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Get out of here. I am I'm feeling pretty... Pretty rested, and uh, I mean, if you look at the size of my knife, it's not like I really need anything else, so. I am uh, fully uh, healed is... up. The only thing is uh, if we wanted to look for the flower uh, here, or flower. if we can find it somewhere else. Well, we can try to take a look around tonight. I don't know if the conditions are right for it, but we might as well do so. We might as well while we're here, I guess. You, uh, right. you all don't have to. It could just be a Moody and I kind of thing. Or if you want to come along, you're more than welcome to. But I imagine there's more fun things to do in the city than just wandering around the woods on the outskirts looking for some fucking flowers. Right. I think I'm going to be... Uh... Yeah, I was going to say, Archie, we could do a little a little uh, Trog Archie uh, adventure. Oh, I did enjoy the last one we went on. When we had first gotten into the city, I um, would have liked to have used Detect Thoughts. Did I see any? Did you see any thoughts? <laughs> like T H O T? I'm not exactly. I'm not exactly sure. What you're over there? <laughs> <laughs> Between I'm Archie and, it, and Trog, it, there's not a single no. thought in any of their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Kids looking for a home. No. Like, the, the, the disrespectful term for women, because Andrew's yeah, not big. <laughs> <laughs> Take it towards the way. Hey, I, I don't just condone that, that kind of misogynistic behavior at my table. <laughs> well, uh, get the fuck out. Yeah, murder and torture, eh? Okay, <laughs> but that's a bridge too far. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mooney and I, we could we could 
separate him. Is there uh, somewhere here at the Red Dove that we'd be able to spend the night? I don't remember where we had slept before. You guys slept here. Oh, you, we're doing such a good job. Rooms are on the house this time. Well, thank you much. To be fair, I think they were on the house last time, too. But we'll let bygones be bygones. Right. right. Um, well, also, I think that you're paying well, next time. Do you, have, do you have a name of your friend, the librarian? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Archie. <laughs> I do. Any Hold time. on. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting you to ask it so fast, so let me... <laughs> Let me pull up my <laughs> sheet. Yeah, when you get to the library, go ahead and ask for Jeever. Jeever Briskreach. Jesus. Jeever Briskreach. Briskreach. an interesting name. Jeever, it's two names, first and the last name. Which one's the first name? Jeever. Jeever. <laughs> the one that came first. <laughs> yes. J E V E R. I didn't spell it that way. GV biscuits. <laughs> yeah. You got it, big gravy, guy. Gravy biscuit. Got you. And brisk reach. Biscuit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that um, that sharing of information and us doing that job for you, that everything is even now? We're, we're, we're square. All right. If we had additional information for you, would that be something that uh, could potentially buy us something else? Yeah, I, I feel bad that my companions got nothing out of the deal. And uh, if we had a little bit more to offer, do you think that uh, maybe they could get something out of it? Well, as you can see, I'm sort of plum out of items, but I reckon that won't last too long. Unfortunately, there's not much I can offer you right now until I get my supply chains set back up. Samuel, I do not need a item. Could I ask a question, though? Yeah, absolutely. Is there any way uh, anybody you know that could get rid of uh, the ghosts, the spectrals? Yeah, we're looking for a spectral druid, rectal druid. I don't know. Spectral druid. Magic here in the empire. A little rectal druid. Maybe there'd well, be info, info in the, in the library. Maybe GV could help. I rec yeah, I can recommend the library. There's not too many druids that venture down into the Empire. They're not, they don't particularly feel welcome. Your best bet's either the elves or head back up north. The elves. I'm afraid I can't help you. Afraid I can't help you find one here in the Empire. Have we elves, seen are there any elves? Any not lately, right, I don't you, think. You over... in your sleep? There's, I mean, there's elves just walking around. Oh, okay. uh, the, the empire is multi-racial slash cultural for the most part. The elves that Samuel is talking about are the elves, basically the sun elves and the moon elves. The elves of sun and moon elves. I'm um, sorry, and oh, to the Asahes. west. Okay. Yeah, on the islands to the west. Sun the island moon. boys. Yeah. Uh, thank oh, you, uh, Samuel. That is. The most info I've gotten so far. Well, happy to help. You boys remember, if you ever got anything magic you want to sell, doors are always open. I'll even give you my preferred customer discount if you want to buy something off me. Just, uh, not right now, because I don't have anything. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I guess that's, that's everything, man. All right, Mooney, if you and I want to take off and... We can leave these two to whatever adventures they have, and we can meet back up tonight, get some rest, and head out first thing tomorrow. So, uh, Mooney and I are taken off into the woods, I guess, in the direction of where we... Cause we, we had an idea as to where to head. Right? You will recall that the alchemists said that they can occasionally be found in the foothills near Aspicus. Now, those foothills uh, are uh, going to be a few hours of walking to get back to. <laughs> well, we're, we can take the horses. That's true. Uh, and there's a six-hour window that we'd have 
did we pick up anything before as to what kind of moon conditions needed to exist in order for them to be in bloom? Uh, no. As far as I remember. We didn't get that. Yes. Well, I will let Mooney make a nature check because you wouldn't. I'd assume I'd. That. Pr- yeah. Nature check. Oh, God. Nat 20 again. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> you remember, you couldn't quite recall before, but you do remember that this kind of flower usually is most commonly found during a waxing crescent. And what is the moon currently? It is currently... (laughs) No, it's not, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) It is almost a full moon. You're probably a day or two off from a full moon. So are you you saying that they... There's more grown during a a waxing crescent, or we just won't find any at all if it doesn't... If that moon isn't existing? It's not impossible, but very rare to find. I mean, they're very rare to find even with the right conditions. Even more so to find them without. All right. Um, well, whenever we, if we decide to go to the foothills, my go-to is I would like to cast a uh, locate object. See if I can find some kind of direction that it's coming in. Uh, I'll have to uh, describe or name the object. I sense the direction as long as the object is within a thousand feet of you. How oh, and it stays good for ten minutes, right? Yeah, ten minutes. You can't you can't cast that spell as a as a bird or something. I would I don't I would say I don't know if you could cast that spell though. Because the object's not I guess it depends on how you would describe familiar to you. But I would say you probably, you know, you do know the name, but you've probably never, you've probably never seen him. Have you seen him before? Did we say that last time? I think he rolled for a nature check before and it was like he'd seen him in passing or something. The spell can locate a specific object known to you as long as you have seen it up close at least once. I'd say it's up to you. I probably wouldn't have picked it, but it depends on how close I was to allow it. I guess it depends how yeah. long how long do we want this to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna level with you. I was basically just gonna roll a percentile dice. Oh what? So I might just do that anyway. A percentile dice. Percentile, okay. Uh, I'll just do well, that. Uh, worst case scenario, you know, we'll we'll get out there and uh it'll just give us time, just the two of us. Just us two guys, you know, talking and bonding, you know, and uh, it'll be great. Yeah, you're not picking up anything with your locate object. You we'll cast it sort of almost like this, this sort of like almost red infrared ring sort of shoots out from you. And, you know, you're not getting anything back from it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll close my eyes as this red, as the ring shoots out, uh, open them back up. I, uh, it is uh, very nice outside, but uh, unfortunately, uh, these are not the best conditions to find the flower. Uh, oh, should we, should we just head back or what to, what do you want to do oh i i don't mind uh, it's nice just being out here all right yeah we can we can chill out here for a little bit and see maybe we'll stumble across it you know it's still possible and um yes i, I yeah, could always got a uh, i could always talk to an animal or become a bird or something all right yeah maybe um i talk to a bird and if they see it snatch it up and go to the alchemist with it i don't know that seems crazy but well, but, I will. Uh, we'll be out here for a while, I think. So I can cast Animal Messenger now, or if you want to switch over to them. Yeah, we we can switch over and then come back. Since they would have gotten started on their stuff before we even got to the foothills. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been walking for a good few hours, or walk with the horses anyway. Yeah. Arching Trog, what are you guys up to? <clears throat> All right, Trog. Well, what do you think we should uh, we should get into, bud? Well, uh, I mean, we did a pretty good job at the the last little uh, patrol that we did, and I'm always looking to do a little performance. So, um, 
Do we want to walk around? Maybe we can uh, go to. I said the red. The red dove is pretty happening. So you guys are in there. You say I could do a little right. performance here. Maybe lots of drinking. Do... Lots of gambling. There's a lot of lots people of around. A lot of lot of lots. money flowing. Uh, I mean, lots of drink flowing. This isn't exactly like a noble person's bar slash tavern, but it's not like a dirt but, poor one either. Right, but you said there's gambling. There's some some gold and silver moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are doing some you know dice games and such. All right, all right, Trog. Well, what do you say you uh try to catch some attention and all the see if I can't lighten a few pockets if you know what I'm saying. I uh, I like you you thinking there, guy. Is there a bar? Yeah. So right away, I'm going. I'm hopping up. I'm hopping up onto the onto the bar, <laughs> and I'm gonna grab a drink, down it, and then break out the bagpipes. Okay, go ahead and roll me a go ahead and roll me a performance. Uh, twenty six. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> I have a plus seven for performance. Well. That, ex- that explains it. <laughs> okay, you bust out the bagpipes very much like you did in Cusa. So again, this is not like a very... This is really not an instrument that anyone's ever really seen. It basically being an instrument of your own creation. People are quite enraptured by the beautiful drone of the bagpipes. Lots of heads turning to, uh, to watch the performance. All right. While the distraction is on... I would like to uh, just start picking some pockets, seeing what I can find. Roll me a sleight of hand, please. Do I get advantage because they are distracted? You do have advantage. Okay. So, 17. That is a 22. 22. Okay, so as you're moving your way to the crowd, you do manage to pick a bit of money. Uh, you know, like I said, there's some gambling going on. Um, it's not an incredible amount of money that's being gambled here. This isn't exactly like high stakes, but you do manage to come away with about the equivalent of four or five gold in silver pieces. About four or five gold, but it's all in silver. Okay. As I'm, um, performing, can I scan the room and see if I see anyone that is a little bit more, say, affluent or, you know, maybe has some some gold chains outside of Archie. Uh, (laughs) Roll me a perception. uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. As far as you can tell, there's no one who seems particularly wealthy. There's no, like, fine clothes or fine jewelry being, like, flashed about. Is anyone wearing a gold chain outside of Archie? Outside of Archie, no. How big are the piles of gold that are being gambled? It's mostly not gold. It's mostly silver pieces that are being wagered. Um, There's not a ton of gold pieces being outwardly flashed anyway. If people, if people have them, they're, they're in their pockets or bags or, you know, coin purses. Are people starting to become a little bit more... I mean, it was already lively when we got in there, but as I'm going through the performance, I just want to keep an eye out and see if maybe there's anyone that, you know, ends up winning extra when they're gambling. I uh, just kind of, like, uh, I want to earmark those people. There is a table you see in the back corner where... There's, you do notice uh, a dwarf actually seems to be having a very lucky stream with the dice game he's playing. He's he's rolling in silver right now. Can I see Archie? Um, what did you roll? Fifteen. Yeah, you can see where Archie is. He's a bit conspicuous with the massive gold lion chain. Can I switch up the song a little bit and? I'm not artistic enough to actually come up with something on the spot, but I want to. <laughs> um, 
I want to actually start like singing a song and have it mention the dwarves. Oh wait. Actually, Archie, you roll me a perception check. Perception, you said? Perception, yeah. You know, this is something that I'm going to do really fucking well with. <laughs> I would like to... Oh, I didn't even need to use it! Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I rolled an 18 on that one. I'll roll it again. Even though. Nat 20. There we go. I guess I didn't need yeah, to use it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a 21. See, I mean, you and Trog have been spending lots of time together. You pick up immediately the 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 hidden meaning within the beautiful lyrics about a stout, somewhat fat dwarf. So he's basically just leading me right to this door. All right. Well, he's so he's told you who to look out for. I've got the mark. You're quite you're quite you're short. Right? You might not you might not uh, be able to see him from okay. <laughs> from where your position. <laughs> but you you know you know the person you were looking for. Okay. So I'm gonna keep working through the crowd just keeping an eye out, trying to find this guy. Roll me a percept- or an investigation. Investigation. That's a 10. Um, especially now with the music and the singing, people are up, people are dancing. It's a bit hard for you to find your mark from, from on the floor. You don't have exactly a great vantage point with which to spot people in the crowd. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep looking. Um, so kind of try to work my way through the crowd. How about you give me one more investigation? All right. With, dis- with disadvantage. Now the people are up in the battle moving. Okay. Yeah. Just a five. I can't. Yeah. See course, shit. Unfortunately, with all the movement, so people small. moving around. Yep. Yes, you're with your you know low vantage point. Uh, you can't find can't find the dwarf. Whereas Trog, you can still see him. But Archie's and having a bit of trouble. It's in the it's in the back, correct? Yeah, it's sort of in the back corner against the wall. There's about a there's about four or five of them all at this table playing this game. Can I yet again, I'm not lyrically inclined. Um can I throw in like lyrics about hiding in the back corner? Um, just trying to leave, like, little hints, perhaps, where to find. It's how I'm going to have you make me another performance check. Okay. Sorry, you already got a 20, so you're, you're, you're picking up what he's throwing down. Let's see if you can throw it down good enough. Uh, 24. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think you've ever rolled under, I don't think you've ever rolled, like, a, under a 22 when you've done a performance check. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you 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 pick up what he's putting down. Okay. <laughs> he's down anywhere to go. I'm gonna make my way. I'm making my All way right. downtown. Making your way downtown. I'm walking fast, faces past. Warf I'm bound. dwarf bound. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold, you see a dwarf sitting at a table along with uh, four other people. All right. One dwarf, two gnomes, two humans. Are we playing cards? We playing dice. What do we got? They are playing dice. They're playing dice. I'm gonna I'm gonna pony up to the table. I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to cheat this dwarf out of some money. I'm gonna try there, to. There, uh, there is an there is an empty seat at the table. Is there uh, me being the thief seedy character? Do I know? Is there any way that I can cheat this game and win? The game they're playing is <laughs> kind of a bit of bluff with a bit of luck. We can play it if you actually want to play it. It might take me a bit to explain the rules. I mean, it's not, it's not that particularly hard. Let's see. What do we got? So this game is called Liar's Dice. So okay. basically what, what you're going to do is roll 5d6. I happen to have 5d6. Of all people to have 5d6. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> I, have more, I have more than 5d6, to be completely honest. I'll roll, I'll roll mine as well. Oh, let me see. What what 5d6 do I want to use? 
So when you roll your 5d6, you're going to see how many of each number you have. So just for example, let's say, let's say you have two twos, a three, a four, and a five. So you want okay. to wager the amount of dice for a certain number, which includes both my dice and your dice. So for example, you have two twos. You could say something like, I wager four twos, which means you think total between the two of us are four twos. Okay. If I think that's bullshit, I can say bullshit. And we both have to show our dice. And if it was, you know, wrong, you lose, I would win. Uh, if I say bullshit and you were right, then you would win. So you can either okay. call the you can either call the player or you can place a higher bid. So you say four twos, I could say five threes, something like that. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Well, what do we have here? Oh, I think, uh, you've been mighty l- lucky over here. And, uh, you're, not, like a shot. you're not wrong. I'd like a shot at the title. He, you can tell the dwarf is quite tipsy at the time as well. He's, he's, right. had, he's had a bit to drink. Well, buy-ins, ten silver. I'm going to set ten silver in front. He'll take ten silver from his pile, add it to the middle pile. Oh, basically, your dice, your dice are in a cup. So you put five, the five dice in the cup, put it on the table, shake it up, and then you can lift the cup up to peek inside and see what you have. Is how it's traditionally oh. played. Okay, so so like he really will obviously take... won't know what you have. Like you're not supposed to know what each other have. Right, but it would take some serious sleight of hand to to maybe like change my dice. It'd be very difficult for you to change the dice without somebody noticing. Yes. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I'm pretty sneaky. You could try. We'll try. All right. Let's let's roll for it then. Let's roll and see. Uh, All right. Let's yeah, roll my five d six. Roll roll my five d six here. Go on, lad. You make the first bet. All right. Well, let's start a little little easy. I'm going to say this probably 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three is. Let's make it 4-3s. Four 4-3s, threes. Four threes, eh? Hmm. That tells me there's probably 5-3s. Five 5-3s? Threes. Five threes. Oh, laddie, I'm calling bullshit on that one. Show me your dice. And he will lift his cup up to reveal he, in fact, has zero threes. He has zero threes. Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think my sleight of hand roll was that good. I'm not even going to try it yet. He won that one. I only have one three. He gets his ten you gold. Can't, you can't pull one over on me, laddie. Silver. He takes the 20 oh, yeah. silver pieces. He, he takes the 20. All right. What do you say? One more, lad. Oh, I think I've got one more in me. And I'll put another 10 up. All right. He pushes 10 back in as well. <clears throat> All right. All right, lad. I'll go first this time. Yeah. I'm going to wager two fives. Well, I won't disagree with you there. In fact... I think there's probably four fives. Four fives, you say? Mm. Yeah. I'll do you one better. Four sixes. Four sixes? Oh, I think that's probably bullshit, friend. Let me see your dice. Hold off the cup. It's got two sixes underneath there. I don't have any sixes. I. All right, lad. Silver's yours. I'll take the 20 silver, put it in my pile. All right. What do you say we make this a little bit interesting? I'm going to put 50 silver in the center. 50 silver. Oh, you're a brave lad. All right, I'll match it. So I'll roll my dice. All right, lad. You won the last one. You wager first. 
I'm going to go roar it out and say it. I think we're looking at six twos. Six twos? Well, <laughs> sorry, that's starting off too strong for me. I'm going to call that one. All right. Let's off this cup. No sixes. Well, that's fine because I guessed twos. Oh, sorry. <laughs> six twos. Yeah, no twos. Excuse me. He has no twos. Fuck. No. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I guess my slate ahead doesn't even matter. No. <laughs> you have a six dice suddenly, and <laughs> they're all two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what luck! I, I was banking on him at least having one two. I guess I'll take my beating. I'm, I'm gonna walk away from this one. Sorry, Trump. We, we fucking lost out on this one, buddy. <laughs> that was the saddest James Bond moment. Oh my god. <laughs> that reminds me of that Austin Powers scene where he's playing, I don't know, like poker or whatever, and he like gets a hand that's so clearly wrong and he's like, I'll stay. And they're like, What are you talking about? Like <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do like fun. That's that's a really popular game here in China. Like you play it in every bar yeah. I go to. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it's better when you have more than two people, but mm. higher numbers, more to gamble. Well, why don't we switch back to Kid and Mooney? Every time we have involved Trog in our shenanigans, we've just completely fucked it up. Like he must think that we're just. <laughs> The fucking word. No, no that's not it's true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess you too. I got the yeah. jewelry. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Trog didn't fuck Yeah, it was all. It was all, all right. me. All right. Well, we're back to uh, Mooney and myself, just wandering around the woods. I guess. Yep. Uh. uh I'm just searching for uh, any like nocturnal creature, um, owl, raccoon, hedgehog. Are hedgehogs nocturnal? I googled it. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> there are many because I was such creatures. Sweet. I was originally going to go for a bat, but that's kind of useless. Yeah, it watches um, them. You're out in the woods. So yeah. Um, so. I'm just going to call out for anything specific. Uh, I'll just, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, owl. Try to call for anything nearby. Yeah, now yeah, I can swoop down, land, perch on a nearby branch. Uh, hello, I am uh, looking for a uh, specific flower, if you don't mind helping. What are you looking for? Uh, it is a uh, white color. Uh, known to be located uh, in these foothills, uh, typically only when it is a uh, waxing crescent moon. I know it is a little difficult uh, during this time. I've not seen one around, but I could keep my eyes open. I'd appreciate that uh, if you could spread the word. I should be pretty easy to find. Hey, uh, hey, Moody, I, I agree. Can you, uh, can you, since we're going to be gone, do you think you can ask him to, like, pick it for us? Can they do that? Oh, good point. Like, uh, and, like, make the delivery on our behalf? I mean, there's no way that we're going to know while we're out if it was successful or not, but at least maybe we can put something out there and let this whole thing run itself. This is a, a, a big ask. Uh, but could you, if you happen to find it, uh, pick it and deliver it? It was a, a green something? Flagon. Oh, uh, the green flagon. Uh, if you could take it They're to the... Know. Yeah, you don't know. You probably don't know color. Can I see color? They can probably can see colors. Uh, but uh, well, what, what could I offer you to do this? Have some friends join in. Do you have any mice? Mice. No. I do not like, like feeding animals to other animals, but I can I can look. 
and I'll start searching for any mouse. <laughs> I'm not going to give him myself. What are, uh, what, what are we doing? Uh, the owl. He, he needs he needs a mice a mouse. A mice. <laughs> a mice. <laughs> he needs a, a mouse uh, if he's going to help us. Oh, all right. Well, I can uh, I can maybe help with that. Um, I'm gonna assist him in this search. <laughs> maybe a a, that's a nature check. I mean, there's mice all around. Uh, Derek, since I'm assisting you, do you mind rolling with advantage? My dice are downstairs. I'd appreciate that. Make my me, first one was a it'd, one. It'd be, make me, make me an animal handle, animal handling actually. That is a sixteen. Sixteen. There's lots of mice running around. Uh, a lot of mice are nocturnal, so you can sort of with a sixteen, you can sort of coax them over to you with your crafty druid ways. Oh uh, yeah, calling towards them. Uh, I feel bad, but I'm gonna say. Uh, I uh, sorry, mouse, but I I need you, and we'll try to pick it up by its tail and toss it up. In fact, before you can even pick it up, as soon as you coax the mouse out of its sort of like hiding hole, owl swoops down, and grabs it right off the ground. I uh, close my eyes and look away. Um, is that is that everything? Payment accepted. Great. Uh, is there any? Where you uh, anybody could let us know when it has been uh, accomplished depends where you will be. Oh, good question, uh, kid. We probably will not be staying here. Nah, we're we're going to be taking off tomorrow by the by the sounds of it. But you know, I, I imagine maybe we'll come back in this area if it works out. It works out, but at least this this kind of Gives us a chance. So, uh, good point. Might be hard for them to to get proof, but it is what it is. Yes, uh, Owl. Uh, if you happen to find it uh, tonight or tomorrow, uh, just yell out, uh, "Hoody who!" If not, we will arrive again. So that that is fascinating. I think I've asked you this before, Mooney, but. <laughs> Everyone in your tribe, can they all talk to animals the way that you do? Oh, or is yeah. it like something that you're special? I'd, I'd say most people can. Uh, a lot of us choose the druidic ways. Uh, of course, there are some that the uh, may decide to leave and have different uh, resources. But yes, my family in general, we can speak. Do you? Do you all ever like talk to each other uh like an owl or like a horse or anything or do you like when you're talking to each other is it just like your own like what does your own language sound like i don't know if i've i don't know if you've had a reason to speak it but uh yes that is uh two different two different questions uh first uh yes we have our own uh Ferbolg language uh you may not have caught me but in the mornings, I like to read a, in uh, a Furbog oath. Oh yeah, how does how does that go? I'd I'd love to hear it. Prat, strev, rang, glongbird, storm rang, glongdu, bladitin, or bold klong, gitusin valnol, trutzond, strompart. There is a translation into common. I do not currently have it. But it is uh, basically saying uh, uh, uniting the Furbolgs as one. Uh, bravery, effort, and honor. Chills. I have... Do you see these goosebumps? That sounds... That's beautiful. Uh, a little bit scary. A little bit scary to you. But... Uh, it has to be some kind of uh, scariness in the forest. Your, your other question, uh, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Right, um, right. Speaking as animals... Uh, Sometimes, but that mainly only takes place um, uh, in in the house, you know, with with the pillows. Right, right, yeah. Um, that's all right. We, hmm. it, you sound very. Uh, you seem to be very open when it comes to uh, talking about that kind of stuff. I think that's that's great. Is your whole tribe, your whole society, or all the people like that? Really open about 
who they are and what they want? Uh, yes, uh, it has gotten better as we've, uh, with the younger generation, but the older ones are still pretty, pretty honest as well. Right. Is, uh, right. is that how your, your, uh, family is like open? Uh, probably not in the same way. No, uh, we, uh, we, uh, thankfully so. I, I think that uh, some stuff is meant to be, uh, you know, not, not shared with, with, um, uh, people you are related to. That's the way I see it. But you're, uh, by the way, you're, uh, was it, uh, Val Kithra? Yes. Yeah. Or Valk. Uh, I, I like to call him by his nickname. Valk. Yeah, that's that's my brother's brother's name. Your brother? Would you say uh, you were closest with him? Yeah, you know he was he was my older brother, um, and usually, uh, at least for humans, uh, the older one is the one that's meant to do all the looking out for the younger one and to kind of clear the way. And we didn't have a very easy life, but it was kind of the opposite for us. Um, Valk was a lot uh, was a lot quieter than me. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that I. He kind of just came along. I, I pulled him um, into, well, into this kind of life. So I'm probably responsible for wherever he might be now. But yeah, no, we were we were close. It's been a while since I've seen him. I miss him a lot. Uh, Archie reminds me of him uh, in a way. Archie's a lot more straightforward, and I don't know. He takes more of that the traditional role of a big brother, but. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think the two of them are similar. I, th- I think you'd like them a lot. I would like to meet him. Be nice to know more okay. about uh, your kind in general. Yeah, I, I would think the same of you. And if all goes well, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll we'll see him soon. So, uh, do you have a god? Oh yes, you worship or pray to? Or? Yes, the uh, the big woman. Giannis. Mm. I thought she was more just like a tribe leader. She's like someone you actually pray to. Oh yes, yes, she is. Uh, she is our goddess. We have a, another one as well, but the younger ones tend not to focus on him. So Giannis is. You mentioned like she's kind of like a wife of yours, but she's also like a tribe leader, and she's also like a god. Am I understanding this, or am I? I would say, uh, general, uh, God, I wouldn't say we have, uh, a, a leader of sorts. The oldest. Have you been intimate with Giannis? With, with Giannis? Yes. Yeah. I guess, uh, every night when I am dreaming. Oh, all right. But you've never, I, I, I misunderstood. I think when we had talked about it before, so. I was thinking, oh man, like this guy fucked a god, but that's okay. That's all right. Oh, I, if I do see her, I would not be a post. Uh, and if if you like, you could join as well. Uh, well, that's a bridge that we'll uh, uh, hopefully never reach, but we'll we'll uh, we'll cross it when we get to it. So um, it'd be it'd be wonderful to uh, see your family, and maybe I, I don't really know, but. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get up there eventually, and it seems like we're heading that way that way anyway. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I would like uh, you guys to meet my family once we get there. It will be a difficult conversation at first, but we will see once it happens. There don't be a whole whole lot of humans up there. I can imagine. No, no, no. Uh, there is a uh, major reason why I am always sweaty. Wow, and we, we were one of your first. Basically, your first interaction with people was them kidnapping you. Yes. Sticking you on that ship? Yes. Wow, I'm, I'm so sorry. That's a, We've given ourselves a terrible name. Uh, we'll have to work on that. But uh, anyway, unless you wanted to hang out here and you want to figure you'd probably get back. It's getting, getting a little bit late. Oh, yes, that's uh, fine with me. We can see if there is a uh, drink that the others... May have gotten. <clears throat> yeah, some alcohol, right? Well, uh, it was good talking with you. It was good coming out here, just the two of us. So we'll have to do it more often. Same to you, kid. And uh, I'm going to right. stand back for a bit as 
kid starts to walk away. Uh, I'm just eyeballing him. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just saying my goodbyes to the owl. Well, you guys can make your way back into town. Uh, while they're doing that, Archie and Trog, was there anything else you guys wanted to do for the rest of the evening? Say at this point, we're getting close to about 11-ish midnight. I was just going to say, I want to try and do a big finale and then, you know, put my hat down to try and collect some, some money. <laughs> okay, give me one last performance check. Okay. So you build up into this massive bagpipe crescendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you let off the last final resounding note, and in a fluid motion, sleep, you know, let out a bow, put your hat out. And I'd say you get pelted with some, with some silver. Uh, let's roll a... See how much silver you get. You manage to walk away with a 57 silver pieces as these drunk hooligans are just pelting you with silver coins. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just going to hop down. I'll leave. How much is it for an ale? Five silver? Yeah. I will leave ten silver and grab another ale down it and then make my way towards Archie. I'm going to lick him. I'll lick at him. I'm sorry, (laughs) Trog. I'm going to lick him. (laughs) Don't do that. I'm going to look at him. (laughs) All right. Sorry, buddy. Thought I could be a little bit better than I was and lost everything I, I stole or found, rather. But uh, I'll give you a cut of what we would have earned. So I tossed him two gold pieces. Hey, things happen. I mean, hey, we got we got plenty of plenty of the taverns that we could try to try to swindle here. I mean, we could try to entertain here. So, All right. You want to head off into the night? Yeah, I got. I got to ask, what, uh, what, what did you in? What, uh, what happened? I tried to gamble, and uh, not too good at that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to just stick to uh, the old sticky finger routine. I mean, that, uh, you know, from now on, you could, uh, you know, that we we playing like a dice game or a card game. Right, it was a dice game. I think I might have to stick to a uh, stick to cards. So you could stick to cards, or uh, you know, you could always you know mess a little a little bit with the dice. Yeah. Put some weight. I was thinking about trying to get my hands on a loaded dice set because I do have a playing card set <clears throat> for stacking decks and such. Yeah, I think uh, I think. If we we got to work out some of the kinks here between, uh, you know, the little dynamic we got going. But once we work out the kinks, I think it's going to be pretty profitable for both right. of us. I think we can do great things once we figure it out, friend. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I think it's uh, it's time to hit the head back. Right. I think it is about quitting time. So you guys can go up to your your accommodations if you would like. Frog, if I recall last time you just slept in the kitchen. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your choice again. Okay, Trog's on the way back to the pot. pot. Archie, you're going up to your room. Say yep. maybe about an hour, hour and a half later. Mooney kid, you guys show back up. It's probably about one AM. Between one and two AM at this point, even when you guys arrive back to the tavern. Um and if you have nothing else you want to do, you guys can head up to bed as well. Mooney, do you want a nightcap? Uh, final drink before bed. I think I'm all right. Uh, well, I'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow. In that case. Yes. Uh, this time, uh, I'll sleep on the floor, but in the room. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to stay down at the bar and drink until I pass out. All right. So you guys all go to sleep. Uh, some of you more restfully than others. <laughs> your your sleep wasn't great, kid, since you're just sort of passing it over. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the you worst sleep rel- relatively sad. Yeah, you have quite the hangover when you wake up. And you are about a hundred silver <laughs> short yeah. after all the drinking. <laughs> yeah, I'll mark that. But 
It's the next morning. You're all awake. Um, Samuel comes to each of you to, to get you guys. Um, if you're ready to go now, Samuel can show you to the, or, you know, accompany you to the docks, show you which ship you're taking, and then set you guys on your way. Did I ever hear a, a hootie who? You did not hear a hootie who. Ah, oh, darn. Sorry, uh, sorry to say, uh, the kid, uh, there is no hootie who. Are you feeling okay, by the way? Hmm. I feel better now than I did last time. If I hear yeah. anything, I, uh, I will let you know. Right. I appreciate that, and thank you for all your help, and thanks again for the conversation. I like that. How, uh, hmm, how did last night go for you two? I mean, I made, uh, you know, probably one of the best performances ever. Um, got some coin. Uh, he's helping out Archie here, but, uh, you know, things happen. You win some, you lose some. What are you going to say? All right. Well, fair enough. I'm uh, sorry to hear that it wasn't a super fun time for the two of you. I don't know. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. We clicked. We're perfect. I just uh, eh, got a little bit too confident, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I got you. All right, well, let's head over to this ship. Do we know what ship we're, we're getting on? Do we know anything about it? I would imagine Samuel just kind of set it up and put us on it. Well, um, well Sam, Samuel will, in fact, lead you to the ship if you guys are ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, and since we're going to be off the continent and out of the empire, then we, uh, can you start using our real names again if we want to? So that's uh, exciting. Yeah. I think it'd be really nice to call Mooney by his real name. What did they call you? Did I ask you this already? What, what your people in your tribe called you? Oh, um, yeah. Just kind of like, uh, that one, that one over there. Oh, like, uh, well, you remember what they did with everyone? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the word, uh, thought they just point at me and say thought. <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> that hoe over there. <laughs> uh, but no, we, oh, wait, we wait, come wait. to, come to think of it, kid. You did detect one thought. <laughs> <laughs> no specific names. Um, I would sometimes be called um, uh, Shorty if they were having fun, but that was about it. They were, you were, you were the small one. Yes, yes, I am the uh, youngest and uh, smallest. Holy shit! So is Giannis the only person there? The only thing there with a name? Uh, yes, in uh, in terms of uh, since she is a, a, a goddess. That is fascinating. All right. Uh, enough enough about you. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you have a, any other name? A nickname? Me? Yes, or anybody else. I'll defer that uh, to you guys. I, I, <clears throat> if I had another name, I sure shit never knew it. Right. I mean, my full name is Algebra Swift Tongue the Third. But uh, too much. You can call me. You can call me Archie. Yeah, you can, uh, I just, uh, I go by Trog the Frog, so. Ah, but don't call him a toad. But don't call me a toad. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, hop aboard this, uh, this ship, woop woop, and, uh, go, go on. Yeah, so Samuel takes you to what is actually a planning vessel that's making a trip to, um, to Stillwell. Um, which he explains to you that this isn't exactly free passage and you'll, you will be expected to do some work on the ship. Uh, but, but they'll get you there. No, oh, fair enough. It's about a... Well, since you're an aspicus and not anymore, you're going to have to go up around the horn. That's going to take you probably at least seven or eight days to get to Stillwell. So if there's anything specific you would like to do during that Mm -hmm. Let me know. Otherwise, we'll just hand wave it all, and you're in Stillwell. Well, uh, what did we want to do on the ship? Anything worth uh, 
what do what do the sailors do in their free time? Same thing they do on land, mostly. Drink, dice, fuck, shanties. Oh, trog, shanty. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, of course, you I show these boys how it's done. I'm gonna break out. I keep with the bagpipe. Should I do my flute? Should I do my pan flute? Hmm. Uh, we'll stick with the bagpipes. We'll stick with the bagpipes. I don't know. I, th- I think the sailors like flutes. Well, all right. I'll I'll get this one out. I uh, I call this one. It's I call it my skin flute. Um, it's made out of no. tree skin. Uh, I guess it's, <laughs> you guys call it block. Um, <laughs> made out of tree skin. <laughs> I don't tree skin. <laughs> uh, I don't like it referred to as tree skin. <laughs> well, the, sailor, the sailors have taken quite a liking to you, and they do look forward to your nightly performances. They love you the way you learn. play the skin flute. Yeah, they love the way you play the skin flute. <laughs> the tree skin. You've, taught them a, you've taught them a few things. You've learned a few sea shanties yourself. Are there uh, any sailors with tattoos or any ones that look uh, uh, like specifically more swole than the rest of them? Yeah, there's one or two that look like they're, they're, they're pretty ripped. I mean, all the sailors, for the most part, it's a tough job. They're all in pretty good shape. They've all kind of got that sort of at least that wiry kind of strength where it's sort of unexpected how strong they are. Well, uh, I'm going to pick, I'm going to walk up to the strongest looking guy and I'm going to, you look like a weakling and I would like to arm wrestle you. All right, put it down. Bangs his head on, All bangs right. his hand on the table. I'm going to do that. Always up for a challenge. And he <laughs> flexes. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Strength. Well, natural one. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing because I rolled a fucking two. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Natural one. It's a natural one plus three, but uh, it's a natural one. <laughs> so your arm, just his arm goes down. Your arm goes down. <laughs> it's the worst. Just, just, arm wrestle. Just, just as you're about to start, the ship kind of goes over, kind of gets hit by a, a somewhat larger wave than normal. And both your arms sort of slip off the table. Well, we can call this one a draw, I think. I'm also slightly embarrassed. Yeah, I think I think we should do that. Good match. Good stock. I'll tap him on the shoulder. Goodbye. And I'm just going to walk to the other side of the ship. I don't know why I found that so funny. <laughs> just walk to the other um, side of the ship. <laughs> 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 I uh, uh, since it is a couple days at sea, I'm gonna visit my vessel um, once or twice and just try yes. to talk to talk to my patron. Just kind of keep him updated. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Kind of <laughs> stuff and uh, yeah. Still no response <laughs> though. All right, that's it. Uh, two things. Um... I mainly, uh, I'm just going to be looking out, looking at the sea creatures. Do I see anything interesting or just normal fish, me dolphins? Tell me in nature. Yeah. And other question, is George the horse with us or did we leave him? Oh, good question. You could you could have brought him on the ship with your choice. I'll say. Yeah, we want George. George. Okay, George's on, sh- George on the ship. Uh, all right, that was a uh, uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Um, you can't be quite sure, but from the distance, as you're sailing up around this sort of peninsula, you did see what almost looks like a tentacle kind of slip under the water. Uh oh. Uh, I will. Keep quiet for now. Okay. Archie, uh, you gonna do anything? Well, no, I really don't have anything that I had planned. I mean just chill. In that case, you guys arrive in Stillwell. You disembark, 
you've all picked up a few various skills and not tying general, you know, sailing as you've been asked to help around the ship. Uh, but you are currently on the Stillwell docks. Well, uh, we've been at sea for a while, so uh, uh, I think we should spend a day or two here, get any information we can about our, our uh, journey to Schleen and head out after. Yeah. Like me. So, uh, maybe we can find an odd job or two while we're in town as well, because I am feeling pretty light in the pocket. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could do like a couple performances or something if you guys just want to be like, uh, ooh, you guys can, uh, you can be my groupies. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, I, I feel bad about you doing all the work to, to get money for the rest of us, but, you know, if there's anything we can do to help, uh, I'm down for that. <clears throat> And, well, uh, since we're in a new city, uh, I am going to use Detect Thoughts. This is not a new city. Um, well, it's not for Archie. Well, yeah. You've, you've presumed, I mean, you and Archie broke up. You've probably been to Stillwell as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a nice city. Trog, you're For Trog and Moon, it's Yeah, I don't, I don't know names of places that I go, so but every place is a new <laughs> how's the how's the population looking? Is it similar to Cusa? In terms of no, no, much bigger, much more much people. Bigger. Okay, well, yeah. I am just dripping in sweat you're, at this point. Yeah, you're you're looking at ten tens of thousands, maybe like thirty thousand. Okay, well, I might just be a mouse and hide then. All right, well, we can uh, explore the city a bit and. Enjoy being back on land, and we'll give it a couple of days and head out then. Uh, so we can descend it on the docks if you want, unless you guys want to like yeah, and we can pick up. Yeah, we can pick up on the docks next yeah. time. Okay. Yeah, I like that. 